family, food, and football. ESPNU presents historically black college football. It's an SIAC matchup, Kentucky State and Albany State, next. Hello everyone, Charlie Neal and welcome to Albany, Georgia. Last year, the Albany State Rams cruised to their second straight SIAC championship. But this year, it's a completely different lineup. Only four starters come back from that championship team. That means for Coach Mike White, it's a rebuilding year. On the other side, Kentucky State has a new coach in Fred Farrier. One thing Fred Farrier is trying to do is bring some stability to a program that's had three head coaches in the last three years. Let me bring in my partner, Chris Martin. And Chris, talking about bringing some stability to the program, Fred Farrier is hoping Sean Johnson, his quarterback, can bring some stability. And Johnson is an athletic quarterback. He's a two-way threat. He can beat you with his arms, and when things break down, he can beat you with his legs. He is the X factor today. And if Kentucky State is going to get a victory, he has to have a big game. Well, as far as Albany State is concerned, in terms of rebuilding, Hosea Harris, after sitting in the wings for three years, finally gets to quarterback his own team. And Harris, he is the glue for the offense. The coach is Ray about this young man he's developed into a consummate leader he too is an athletic quarterback but he's looking to pass first and then run we'll see if he can lead his team to a victory today 18th time these two teams have met it's a key SIC matchup from Albany Georgia the Rams of Albany State against the thoroughbreds of Kentucky State back with the kickoff in just a moment Four, right here Welcome back to Albany, Georgia. Charlie Neal, Chris Martin here with you for this SIAC matchup between Kentucky State visiting from Frankfort, Kentucky and the Rams, the Golden Rams from Albany, Georgia. Kentucky State won the toss. They have deferred and decided they would kick off and get the ball to start the second half. Fred Farrier, the head coach of the Kentucky State Thoroughbreds. He's in his first year. He's a graduate of Holy Cross College. Spent a season as the offensive coordinator at Shaw University. They went on to the CIAA championship. On the other side, there's his counterpart, Mike White. He's in his sixth year as the head coach of the Golden Rams of Albany State with a record of 37 and 20, 64% winning percentage. And he's taken them to the SIAC championship the last two years. So it should be a whale of a ball game. In fact, the last time that Albany State Mike lost a home or a should say a conference game to any team in the SIAC, it was to the same Kentucky State team two years ago. They have a great team, and you can just feel the energy in here today, Charlie. It's the home opener, and these guys are ready to get it started, ready to have an impact today. And it should be a, a, a great ball game. In fact, we talked about both teams coming in one and one. As far as the season is concerned, Albany State started the season with a win over Miles by a point, 24-23. They lost a week ago to Valdosta State. Now, even though Valdosta State is not in the SIAC, they count that as a, as a conference game because they did not schedule nine conference opponents this year. So it will count as far as the conference standings are concerned. But again, they are not a conference team. And as far as... Uh, uh, Kentucky State is concerned. They started the season with a win over Clark Atlanta, 25-13. A week ago, they lost a five-point game to Lenore Ryan, 32-27. And here's Mike Farrier, the head coach of the Thoroughbreds of Kentucky State. Chase Clark will be the man to kick it off for the Thoroughbreds. This ball is going to come down to Brandon Green, and Brandon Green trying to turn the corner, and he gets up to across the 30, cuts it back, still on his feet, 35, and just brought down at the last moment, right at about the 36-yard line. 
It was Ralph Warner who came up to make the stop for the thoroughbreds of Kentucky State. So at the 36 is where Albany State will go to work. First down and 10. They start on offense. As you look at their quarterback, Hosea Harris, SIAC Player of the Week, against Miles, 144 yards passing, 79 yards rushing. As Chris said earlier, he's been the glue, and they're going to work out of the shotgun on first down and 10. Putting it in the air as a complete in front of his own bench on the near sideline. Craig Barber, the junior from Tampa, Florida, came up to make the stop. Marcus Wright was there defensively for Kentucky State. Charlie, we talked about this in the opener, too. Harris is really a passing quarterback. He's looking to throw first and then run. You notice they came out in a spread offense, so they're going to put the ball in the air early. So we got a penalty flag on the first play of the ball game, and it looks like it may be against Albany State, and it's an eligible man downfield. So that's going to nullify and negate that eight-yard gain on the pass play to Craig Barber. Let's listen to our referee, Greg Edwards. The offensive line for Albany State, Antonio Atkins in the backfield, along with the H-back James Wilson, the receivers, Antonio Ivey, Joshua Johnson, and Craig Barber, who just made the catch. The lineman up front, Ron Simmons, the only returning starter, along with Chris Chapman, Mike Livingston, Yancey Reynolds, and Matthew Magwood. It is first down. First and 15. And here's the running play. Cutting back is Antonio Atkins. He gains maybe a yard or two, and that's it on the play. Atkins out of Jessup, Georgia, brought down by Courtney Reed. And they say he's the total package. Charlie, we talked to the coaches yesterday. They like Atkins. He's a slasher type of running back. He has great vision, and I've watched for him today to cut it back against the grain. It'll be second down. Second and about 13. From the shotgun again. Over the middle. Batted in the air. Incomplete. Very close to being intercepted. Let's look at the defense for the thoroughbreds of Kentucky State up front. We have Abraham Jackson, Robert Beal, Henry Miles, and Jason Sneed, the down linemen. The linebackers, Timothy Vaughn, Darren Simmons, Sims, rather, Terrell Henderson, and the line uh, the defensive backs, Marcus Wright, a good one on the corner, along with Robert Brown, Leonard Banks, and Courtney Reed at the other corner. Third down. Third and 13. Up the shotgun again. Looking for somewhere to run. One of the things I know that they were trying to do is contain the quarterback, Hosea Harris. And one thing we talked to him a little bit about yesterday was does he have happy feet? Does he get out of there too quickly, too quickly sometimes? But good defense downfield today. Right. And, Charlie, this was improvision. He looked downfield. He went through all his reads. He had nothing there. Good job of pulling the ball in and trying to make some yardage. So the first punt of the ball game. This will come from Matt Hawthorne, junior out of Savannah, Georgia, averaging 37 yards per punt. Marcus Wright on the return. And he's out across the 27 to about the 28-yard line. Timeout on the field, there's no score. We're in the first quarter. 13-37 remaining. We'll be back to Albany in a moment. Fred Farrier, first year as a head coach, came on uh, back in the spring, and he said he had 96 players on the team at spring ball. By the end of spring, he had cut it down by 34, down to 62. So a lot of guys got the walking papers. <laughs> that's, that's bringing discipline and order to the program. First and 10, first offensive possession for Kentucky State, and as Cassius Chambers on the carry, a gain of two. It'll be second down and eight. He's up to the 30-yard line. And there's Sean Johnson, the quarterback. The stats on him. Joe McBride was the quarterback from a year ago. And there's what Sean Johnson gets the, uh, gets the call this year. Has solid understanding, as Coach said, of football. Real good student of the game. 
From the eye formation, Nick Moore is the full back, the up back in the eye. Chambers is the second back. Second down and eight. Play action. Pass. Intercepted. Right at the 40-yard line. Coming up with the INT for Albany State is Mike Martin Pittman. Pittman coming up with the interception. Let's look at it once again, the strong safety. The key here, Charlie, is he got a good read on the quarterback who telegraphed it. He slid under, saw the curl route developing. Excellent drop on the ball. And look here, you see the pressure up front. That causes the quarterback to throw it quickly and allows the defensive back to make a play on it. Great defense that time. Excellent pick by Pittman. And great field position for Kentucky State at, their own, at the 41-yard line of Kentucky State. Albany State has the ball from the shotgun. It's Harris. Swing pass out of the backfield. Has it complete down the far sideline and running with reckless abandon before being pushed out of bounds as Atkins, Courtney Reed, finally knocked him out. And Atkins, that what they said about Atkins is he's really a receiver also. You'll see a great catch here. He kind of snares the ball out of the air. He has excellent hands, good vision. I look to them. If, if they're going to have a big day today, he's got to touch the ball. He has seven catches to his credit for the season already. It is first down. First and ten at the 20-yard line. Atkins again gets the ball in his hands and he's still on his feet carrying defenders with him and he's close to another first down down to about the 12-yard line he'll be about a yard or two shy of another first down Robert Brown came up to make the stop defensively he's the strong safety of the book defender for Kentucky State there you look at the numbers on Atkins coming into this game averaging 2.2 yards per carry and they have a couple backs they can put in there. Right now, it is Andrews, the, the lone setback. And Andrews has the ball. Andrews turns the corner. Andrews out of bounds at about the six-yard line. Andrews on the carry that time. They say he's the rock. He's the no-frills player. Atkins is the total package. And he's really a nice counter to Atkins, Charlie. He runs well downhill when he gets his shoulder square. He's a little bit more stout than Atkins. Look for them to mix it up today. First and goal at the six-yard line. Albany State threatening. And back inside handoff that goes to Andrews, the six-foot senior. He's from Brunswick, Georgia. Came into the game averaging 5.4 yards per carry. Had a 25-yard run a week ago against Valdosta State. Valdosta is the defending Division II champions. But really, Antoine Andrews, he runs well between the tackles. He's a big, solid kid, uh, about 195 pounds. And so you, they're going to get the ball to him early and often. Second and goal. At the one. Going back to pass. Harris throws it. Incomplete. Off the fingertips of Joshua Johnson, the sophomore from Stone Mountain, Georgia. And Charlie, number 81. that should have been a touchdown. Uh, the quarterback put the ball right on the numbers. Great throw by Harris. Interesting formation. You see they spread you out here to create one-on-one -on -one matchups. He has the receiver open on the slant route. You can't throw it any better. He's got to make that catch. Third and goal at the one. Make that at the six-yard line. Correction. At the six-yard line. Quick drop. And the quarterback fumbles the ball. He was hit by Robert Brown, the strong safety. He fumbles, and Kentucky State comes up with it. Good play by the DN coming from his blind side. Harris didn't even see him that time. Charlie, interesting. They spread you out on goal line. We'll get a nice look at it here. See, he's going to have his back. He doesn't even see him. The defensive end coming there. Good pressure. Interesting play call, though, Charlie. On the in on the goal, and we're sitting there spreading out in a you know spread up wide open offense. You got to run the ball in there and power with your, your star running backs. And you saw Atkins having to make a choice on who to block because two people were coming at him and he could only hit one at a time. It was a jailbreak. <laughs> yes, it was. First down and 10.
Chambers trying to left side now. So each team has turned the ball over once. Here's the offensive lineup for Kentucky State with Jeremy Douglas, Brandon Adams, the wide outs, the running backs, or Nick Moore and Cassius Chambers, the tight end Dan Hawkins. Up front, the linemen, led by Artavius Williams in the middle, the guards, Sennett and Leonard. The left tackle is James Jenkins, the right tackle, Tavares Dishman. It is second down, seven. From the shotgun, Johnson in trouble. He's a left-hander, so he's running in his strength. And is caught on the near sideline and down and out of bounds for a first down. Big catch by Derek Talbot, the senior from Lexington, Kentucky, and Dunbar High. Didn't even play a week ago because of a hamstring. Charlie, and this is something you just can't teach, and you can't game plan for it. Nice improvision by Sean Johnson that time, finding a receiver. You'll see he gets flushed out, but where he can hurt you is with his legs. He rolls out, lets the play develop, sees a receiver. Nice throw and catch. Well, he was rolling to his strength as you look at Derek Talbot's receptions for the season. Only played one game prior to this one. That was the season opener. Just look at the defense for the Golden Rams of Albany State. The down lineman Franklin Turner, Cedric Boone, and Jason Marshall, the linebackers. Eric Crosby, Troy Williams, Roderick Cummings, and Alton Petway. And the secondary, watch out for Dimitri McCray on one corner, along with Mike Pittman, the strong safety. Rod Ripple is the free safety. Marcus Jefferson, they say he's tough as he gets. He's one of the smallest defensive backs ever to play at Albany State at 5'10", number 14, at the other corner. Quarterback keeper, and he doesn't get away this time. Coming in is Eric Crosby, the outside linebacker to make the stop, the junior out of Laurel, Mississippi. He had a 97-yard interception that he returned for a touchdown against Miles earlier the season. Charlie, this is a major league play. You'll see Crosby here fight off a block to get to Johnson. That is an outstanding play. Coaches rave about Crosby. He is their defensive playmaker. That'll bring up a third and 10. Again, Sean Johnson out of Trinity High in Louisville, Kentucky. Computer science major, working from the shotgun. The left-hander looking to go to the air. Under a little bit of pressure, lets it go, has a man out there. Overthrown, though. Just overthrown. He had Cassius Chambers coming out of the backfield, but he just couldn't drop it down in there to him. So to bring up a fourth down, punting situation. Look at Fred Farrier. Started his coaching career at Michigan State as an assistant under Nick Saban, and he said he was one of the guys who has had a lot of influence on his coaching career, along with his dad, who coached for 30 years in the Cleveland area and sent at least 50 players to the NFL. There you look at Stephen Harris. He's the punter. Sophomore out of Chiefland, Florida. Brandon Green is the deep man to return the punt, and he will not get a chance to return this one as it takes an Albany State bounce and dies right at about the 42-yard line. Timeout on the field. We have no score here in Albany. We're in the first quarter with 8.33 remaining. Stay with us. We'll be back. Charlie Neal along with Chris Martin here in Albany, Georgia. This SIC matchup, first and 10 for Albany State. At their own 42-yard line, Joshua Johnson is the man in motion. And off to the second back through, and that's Antonio Atkins. And Atkins gets about eight yards up to midfield on that carry before Joe White came up to make the stop defensively. Charlie, Number Kentucky 46. State, they're putting a lot of guys in the box. It's going to make it difficult to run without going to the passing game. They're, they're walking down their buck, linebackers as they call, and getting them close to the ball. And Albany State likes to go without a huddle, so it forces you to, infest, especially offensive linemen, to be in shape, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of new 
offensive lineman in there as this time Antoine Andrews picks up the first down inside the 45 to about the 44 yard line Timothy Vaughn number 13 on the stop defensively you know we talk about Hosea Harris and how he's matured he has a will to win Yule Joyner was the quarterback of record to took, that took them to the last two SIAC championships. He's a grad assistant, a student assistant on the team now, as is uh, Alvin Jackson, Alvin Ray Jackson, the receiver. But they said Joyner was a man who made plays. Harris is faster. So we'll see how it all plays out as we continue here as Andrews gets the call. And Andrews goes straight into the gut, maybe a yard on the play, and that is it. It'll be second down and nine. Charlie, I think what impresses me most about Harris and talking to him yesterday is that he's an unselfish kid and he really looks to help everyone out around him. Mm -hmm. Coaches rave about how he's developed into a leader. And I think that's because he's unselfish and he knows that he'll do whatever it takes for his team to win. And Harris is uh, ranked second in total offense in the conference, SIAC. Number two in passing, number one passing efficiency, and number eight running. When your quarterback is one of the top leaders in the conference of running, you know he's doing something good. Another turnover possibly, but I think Albany State got it back. A little mix up on the possible handoff between the quarterback and the running back. Charlie, it looked like it was it looked like it was play action. I think he wants to fake the handoff here, pull it back, he but did. it actually caught the elbow of the running back, Andrews. You'll see it here. See, he wants to pull it back and go to the post route, but it hits the, the elbow of Antoine Andrews. Yeah, because James Wilson, the H back, was streaking. I mean he was he was he was in the next county. <laughs> He throw me the ball. <laughs> he was there. Third down, a loss of uh, about three or four on that one. Under pressure, a lot of jerseys chasing him. And it's going to be sacked all the way back to the 33-yard line. A big loss on that play. About a, almost a 20-yard loss. And that time, Charlie, Harris has got to get rid of the ball here. He's looking downfield, good coverage, so there's nothing there. When he gets flushed out, get rid of it. You know, you don't want to take a sack where you're losing that much yardage. Excellent defense, though. Kentucky State continues to apply a lot of pressure. That drive started at their own 42. They're punting from their own 35. They lost seven yards in the scheme of things. Fair catch being signaled for and made by Marcus Wright. Right at about the 28-yard line. So it'll be first down and 10, and Kentucky State will get the ball for the third time this afternoon. At their own 28-yard line, it'll be first down and 10. We've had two turnovers, one by each team. Coming into today's game, as we are down to the final quarters or final minutes of the first quarter. Seven points, Albany State scored in the first quarter. They've given up 10. Kentucky State, though, with the ball out of the shotgun. Again, little screen pass to Chambers. That was intended to be a screen, but it was read very well by the defense of Albany State, and they actually lost yards about four or five on the play. Charlie, nice job of the defense that time retracing. They smelled out the screen. Sean Johnson did a nice job of letting it develop. The defense, this defense, they move pretty well, so they're able to get to the ball quickly. I think we got a late hit there, though, Charlie, at the end of the play. Don't forget, beginning September 12th, Let's see, first of all, before we talk about that, let's listen to our referee. So we get a personal foul face mask, even though they read the screen very well, but the penalty situation is gonna give Kentucky State a first down. Back at the 28-yard line. First and 10. Johnson looking to throw. Nobody there under pressure. Throws it to the sideline, but it's out of bounds on the near side in front of the Albany State bench. I think Johnson's getting having a tough time with this pressure. The defense for Albany State, they move very well. Like I said, they play sideline to sideline. He has no throwing lanes, Charlie. 
Brandon Adams was the man he intended that ball for. He's an interesting story. Brandon is actually the second string quarterback for the Kentucky State team, but they play him at wide receiver. He's such a good athlete, they can't afford to just let him sit. So they've got him playing as a wide receiver. He's a junior from Apollo High down in Owensboro, Kentucky. Caught 16 passes a year ago. So far this year, he has three catches to his credit. Back to pass again. Johnson throws it out. It bounces on the ground in front of Cassius Chambers, the senior from Chicago. He transferred from Northern Iowa. He's a sports management major, led the team in rushing last season with 626 yards. But we have another penalty flag down. An eligible man downfield preliminary signal from Greg Edwards. We've had a couple of those already, haven't we? And this is what we talked to Coach White, you know, is that we're saying that you can't have these penalties. You can't beat yourself. And Coach Fair, he, he dwelled on this last night. He said, our guys got to clean up the mistakes. We cannot afford to go out and beat ourselves today. In the preseason picks, Albany State picked to finish second behind Tuskegee because they lost so many people. We talked about the fact that they only have four starters back from a year ago while Kentucky State is picked to finish fifth. Second down. Second and 15. This is a quarterback draw. This was intended to be a run all the way. You could see it in this yardage gained up to the 31-32 before Alton Petway made the stop defensively. Speed rusher. Let's watch it again. Petway's a good player. He likes, you see he's strong at the point of attack. He is a speed rusher, but you see him track down Sean Johnson, who's got some wheels himself. That's why he's so. got so much speed. <laughs> <laughs> Comes from one side, goes to the other side, makes a tackle from behind. He is a heck of a player. He'll, he'll have a big day today. Well, last year they had a kid named Walter Curry, a defensive end who was all everything. In fact, signed as a free agent with the Ravens, got cut uh, in camp this year. But uh, I'll tell you, he reminds a lot of people of Curry. Here's a straight handoff. Chambers straight into the line to bring up a fourth down. That was a third down situation. So to bring up fourth down, we're down to the four-minute mark. Charlie, it's interesting with Albany State defense, their interior linemen and Petway, they're so good at applying pressure to the quarterback that really Albany State hasn't had to run a lot of blitzes today. Their interior linemen continue to play on the other side of the ball. It's making it very difficult for Sean Johnson. Stephen Harris, his first punt covered 25 yards. There's the deep man to return it. Brandon Green, junior out of Houston, Texas, who averaged as a kick returner, 17 yards. This is his first duties as a punt returner this year, and they just miss getting a block on that. It comes up to Green at the 31-yard line, and he's knocked down at the 39. Eight-yard return on the punt. Timeout on the field. No score from Albany, Georgia. SIEC matchup. Stay with us. Three seventeen. the time remaining first quarter. No score between Kentucky State and Albany State. Glad you could join us on this Sunday afternoon. A beautiful day here in Albany, Georgia on the U. Charlie Neal, Chris Martin. There was an illegal procedure penalty against Kentucky State. So they're going to kick it over again. And Stephen Harris will do the honors. And he'll be kicking to Brandon Green. And he gets off a high kick. Green feels it. And he gets away from the first wave, but gets it across the 46. So they gained about five yards on the punt. Don't forget, beginning tomorrow, September 12th, Mondays, the U will go inside the polls. It'll come your way at 6 Eastern. Join Mike Hall, Mike Gottfried, and Scouts Incorporated's Todd McShay as they analyze the newly released polls. Detailed breakdowns and analysis of the week that was and the week to come in college football. The U inside the polls every Monday at 6 p.m. Eastern right here on ESPNU. Mike White played here at Albany State and now is the head coach. On 46-yard line, Atkins 
And to the secondary. Atkins cuts it back. Atkins is going to score. He's at the five. Touchdown, Albany State. 54-yard run by Antonio Atkins. But there's a penalty flag. Now let's see what the flag is all about. Holding flag day for the referees. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a beautiful run, too, by Atkins. 54 yards, but it's going to be nullified, I believe, by this penalty flag. Somebody else. It was a great run. It was a gorgeous run by Mr. Atkins. That would have been his longest run of the year. Previous long was seven. You're going to see a holding coming in your screen right there on the corner who comes up and contains the play. Here it is right there. You see him grab the jersey and that a little was, bit of the face mask, too. <laughs> had a little bit of everything, huh? And that was uh, the man who returned the, the kick a minute ago, Brandon Green, who was uh, whistled the flag for that, the H-back flag for that penalty. And Charlie, what the refs look for there is if the number kind of distorts. So when you're pulling that jersey, when they see the number distort, it's an easy call for them. So it's first and ten. It was from the spot of the infraction. So the ball is still across midfield. And at the 47-yard line. This time it is Andrews. And Andrews doesn't have hardly anywhere to go that time. Maybe a yard, and that is it, because Abraham Jackson, number 67, came up to make sure that he didn't get loose. It was great penetration that time by Jackson. He's a playmaker on defense for Kentucky State. Good contain, way to use his arms at the point of attack, nowhere to run with the ball. Has two interceptions to his credit already this year for a defensive tackle. That's saying a lot, isn't it? It tells you how <laughs> athletic he is. Second down, nine. From the shotgun, Hosea Harris, an only child, been sacked five times coming into this ball game. Stands in there under a little pressure. He's been sacked. Fumbles the ball, but jumps on it. Boy, I'll tell you, they've had fumbleitis today, haven't they? <laughs> the ball has been on the ground an awful lot today so far, but that time, Harris just didn't tuck it away. I mean, you can't carry that thing out there like a loaf of bread. He had it with one arm. You'll see it here. See, he's carrying it like a loaf of bread. And what it does, it actually hits his leg. And he came up and knocked it out, huh? Yeah. You got to tuck that thing away, Charlie. See, he's carrying it with one arm. Protect the ball. It actually hits him on the leg. He's got to do a better job of protecting the football. Third down, third and 12. He's back to pass. Under pressure. Screen pass. Almost intercepted. Almost intercepted, getting his hand in there. Again, the man who's been all over the place, Robert Brown, moved from linebacker to biology major number six out of Port or Orange, Florida. Port Orange, Florida, number six. Charlie, it's interesting because with their stud linebacker, which is Robert Brown, he's really a linebacker, but he also is athletic enough that he can drop back and cover. And we saw it on that play. He smelled out the screen. Good reaction by him in getting a hand in and breaking up the pass. Excellent play. Fourth punt today for Matt Hawthorne. Make it the third, actually. One possession ended in a fumble. Good kick. Let this one go. Hopefully it dies for Albany State. And they down it right at the one-yard line. The return man was hoping Marcus Wright it would go into the end zone because inside the 10, you always want to let it go. But this one died, and it'll be brought out to the one. It's Thursday night, Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference football will take center stage here on the U as the Pirates of Hampton University predicted to win the MEAC this year, head down the East Coast to take on the Aggies of North Carolina a and I'll be there for that one. College football Thursday night, 7.30 p.m. Eastern, right here on ESPNU. And for more information, log on to ESPNU.com. Fred Farrier's team that backs against the wall, their own one. If you're going to make a mistake, you don't want to make it here. <laughs> I think they got to power the ball straight ahead. 
get himself some room to work with. Now the quarterback, Sean Johnson, not liking what he sees, decides he's going to take a timeout. You know, one of the interesting stories is they lost a young man up front by the name of Travis McCullough. He was a preseason all-SIAC second-team selection. He decided he was going to take... Uh, a leave of absence just decided to go back home and he quit the team he wanted to take care of his family get a job coach tried to convince him to stay but he decided he wanted to go and that can put you know the team in a tough position but they said you know we have some young guys that just have to step up and replace them they figure they need to reload and you know it's going to set them back but they have young kids that can get developed well, well, you know, we talked earlier about the fact that Coach uh, had to get rid of some people, some locker room lawyers. Anytime you come <laughs> into a new program as a head coach, you have to make some changes. And, you know, when he came in and he talked to him with the new staff and everything, it was hard to convince these kids because they'd seen three coaches in three years. They said, they've heard this all before. But what he did, he has a lot of coaches who played on championship teams. Between his coaching staff, they have 19 championship rings between them. They brought them all out, sat them on a table, let the kids see them. That convinced them these guys are for real. That's all it takes, Charlie. <laughs> seeing is believing. And seeing all those championship rings, those kids wanted to play. From the one-yard line, play action. And it's to the fullback. Nick Moore out of the backfield, number 44. And Nick Moore gains a couple of yards before he stepped out of bounds. He had a little more room, but he just couldn't get his feet down under him. That's a great play call. That time, Albany State defense thinking that Kentucky State's going to come with a run, and they slip more out in the flat. Nice play call by the offensive coordinator. Yeah, that's where his foot stepped on the line there. Yeah. He's a big kid at 6'2", 260. Real he, big kid. <laughs> he's a massive. You better tackle him low. Second down. Fumble! Should be Albany State getting the ball. They have it. At the one-yard line. The ball just popped in the air, and Alton Pentway, who's been all over the place today, thumbs up with the FR, the fumble recovery. Charlie, is there something on the ball? Because it has been on the ground all day. Nice pressure. That time you see your lineman getting good surge. And Petway is Johnny on the spot. You know, good things happen when you're around the ball, and it always seems that Petway, he's always around the football. 52 seconds left in the first quarter. And Albany State in great position right now. They bring in Mr. Andrews. First and goal at the one. It goes to Andrews, and he goes in with... Well, no. They were not at the one. They were at the three, actually. I thought he was a little closer. This is just power football here on the dive to Andrews. He's pretty stout, so they tried to give it to him up the middle. Nice job by number 24 coming in and making a play. Marcus Wright. At the two-yard line is where they are. Andrews again with the ball. And now he gets it in. Touchdown, Albany State from two yards out. They take advantage of the turnover, and they put six points on the board. Charlie, when you have an offensive line where they're 330, they're 275 and 320 across the board, look at the left surge. Clearing out the running lane from Antoine Andrews. Credit the offensive line there, really getting good push. 22 seconds left first quarter. And there's Mr. Andrews on for the point after is Matt Hawthorne. He's only missed one this year. He said he just, just pulled it. Missed that one against Valdosta, but he's perfect here. And he's 4-5 on the season. And it's a 7-0 ball game as Albany State takes advantage of a miscue by Kentucky State. And they put seven points on the board. Charlie, we'll get another shot of it here. You watch the left side of the line just clear people out of there. You know, he's sniffing the goal line, but give credit to those big hosses up front, moving bodies. Excellent job by the offensive line. Nice job of getting to the house for Antoine Andrews. And Petway started all with the fumble recovery. He's been a man among boys here today so far. Out of Manette, Alabama. 
He ranks second in the conference in tackles for loss. He would rather have the ball like he had it rather than tackle somebody for a loss. And Fred Faria got to be saying, hey, we can not make mistakes. They've had an interception today. Fortunately, they dodged the bullet on that. But this fumble, when you give the ball up that deep in your territory, it's going to be hard not to come away with something. Absolutely. And when talking to Coach Ferry yesterday, again, to reiterate, he said, you know, we just can't come out and make mental mistakes. And fumbling the ball, you know, you got to protect the ball. Very costly for his team. But you are seeing two good defenses here. Very athletic on both sides. And they continue to apply a lot of pressure. You know, skilled players that can run. This is great football, Charlie. Back to receive the kick will be Cassius Chambers. He's the deep man for the thoroughbreds of Kentucky State. Now we've got a flag delay of game on the kicking team. The kicker, that's Matt Hawthorne, had problems getting his kicking shoe on. And he was over there working on uh, getting it tied. So they're going to get a delay of game penalty against... <laughs> Albany State, and that's something you don't hardly ever see, do you? <laughs> he just kicked an extra point, and now he had problems. He had to change shoes for the kickoff. <laughs> and in changing shoes for the kickoff, he calls his team a delay of game penalty. <laughs> got, never seen that before. Got to figure out what shoes to have on. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen that before. <laughs> and here he is kicking it off. It's a special shoe. Yeah, Chambers. Now he'll let it go. And this will be Marcus Wright. Marcus Wright cuts it back. Marcus Wright across midfield. A great return up to the 47, 47 yard line is where they're going to mark it of Albany State. Maybe around the 46. And talking to the coaches of Albany State yesterday, we said, who's the one player that you look for on Kentucky State? They said Marcus Wright. And you see why he has excellent speed and acceleration. Nice cutback move here. And he's a guy that he has to have the ball in his hands. And every time he touches it, something big happens. First time that Kentucky State has had the ball across midfield. Let's see if they can capitalize. First and 10 at the 46 with time running out here in the first quarter. 46 of Albany State. This is almost a lateral back. They get it complete. On the near sideline and coming across the field with it is Jeremy Douglas, number 12. It'll be second down. Gain of only maybe one. Second and nine. Charlie, Sean Johnson's got to lead his team here. They have great field position. You know, he's got to make something happen here. From the eye, Cassius Chambers, and Chambers moves the pile a little bit for about three more yards. And that's going to be the end of the first quarter. We're in Albany, Georgia for this SIAC matchup. Albany State, the defending, two-time defending SIAC champs. They have the lead right now. Albany State over Kentucky State, 7 nothing. Back with the second quarter in just a moment. Call now. Charlie Neal, along with my partner Chris Martin here in Albany, Georgia. Albany State leading 7-0 on the right. You see Mike White in his sixth year on the left. Here you see Fred Faria, one of the four new head coaches in the SIAC this year, along with Terry Buford at Morehouse, Terry Bahur at Clark Atlanta, and Johnny Cole over at Lane College. From the shotgun. And the flag is down. We may have had some movement up front, so that play is going to be nullified. Let's see what this is all about. Interesting that time, Charlie. They came out in a trips formation. So they're trying to flood the zone, see if they can get a receiver to sit down in the hole of the defense. Offsides against the defense. So it'll be third and about one after the five-yard penalty against Albany State.
Albany State came into the game as the second most penalized team in the SIEC, averaging 98 yards per game in penalties. That's not something you're proud of. No, and you'll see it so far in the first quarter. The stats here, Charlie. Albany State is, they've run the ball pretty well, and they're kind of throwing it around well, too, but they're pretty balanced on both sides. And the handoff, this time to Ronnie Robinson. Ronnie Robinson, Anthony Ronnie Robinson, a junior out of Frankfort, Kentucky, from Franklin County High. Number two rusher on the team a year ago, 587 yards, and he has an average of 3.2 yards to his credit this year. But he doesn't gain the first down, and it's fourth down, unless they're going to measure. Well, we got an injured player down, too, for Kentucky State, and that's number 60. That's Octavius Williams, the left guard from Winter Garden, Florida, transferred from Moorhead State. Fred Farrier has to be concerned. He can't afford to lose any linemen, especially his starters. No, and they don't have a whole lot of depth, Charlie. So you see Coach Farrier there in consternation, hoping that his big fellow's all right. Third coach in three years at Kentucky State. He's up and off on his own power, Octavius Williams. Last year, Cornell Burbage was the head coach at Kentucky State. He was an interim coach for a year. And then two years ago, it was Donald Smith who was the head coach. In fact, Donald Smith... Coach Kentucky State team was the last time that Albany State lost the conference game. And that was two years ago here in Albany, Georgia. Last year, Kentucky State lost at home to Albany State. Back to do the punting. That's Chase Clark out of Frankfort, Kentucky, a freshman. We get another flag. We've seen a lot of penalties in this yeah. game. This has to be a delay of game or a lot of carp. There's a lot of flags on the carpet today. <laughs> well, they're talking it over. Now I think they're going to pick this flag up. Maybe the clock wasn't reset. Referee is telling us something, but we could not hear him. So it's still fourth down. And we still have a punting situation facing Kentucky State. Be leery about kicking the ball to Atkins. He's very he's electric. And it's gonna take a bounce in favor of Kentucky State, but there's a flag on the play. Charlie, that's a lot of yellow today we're seeing. Both sides of the ball, you talk about discipline. Six penalties in the first quarter alone between these two teams. And it's interesting because with Coach Faria and Coach White, they're both disciplinarians. So they're very perplexed with their teams right now. Maybe fair catch interference. You see the young man trying to signal for the fair catch for Albany State. That's Antonio Atkins. It looked like he may have been uh, bumped into. But was he blocked into the man? See, that's what you have to look at. They do wave the flag off, and that's probably why, because the officials got together, had a discussion that the Kentucky State player did not interfere because of his own volition, but he was blocked into the uh, return man. That's a good call on your part, Charlie. And uh, pro props to the referees for huddling together and figuring that one out. But then they said it was an offsetting penalty, so it was two flags down. We missed the other one. <laughs> But whatever it is, they still the ball is going to be down at about the two-yard line, and that's where Albany State gets the ball, first down and ten at their own two. They lead it seven to nothing. First down and ten. Seven to nothing. Our score. We're in the first quarter. Under 14 minutes to play before halftime. 
I should say second quarter rather. Don't forget about all the people who suffered tremendous losses down in the Gulf states, in the Gulf Coast of New Orleans and Mississippi and Alabama to donate to the Hurricane Relief Fund. Call 1-800-HELP-NOW. Spanish, 1-800-257-7575. Or log on to the web at www.redcross.org. Keeping the ball on the ground, trying to make sure that they don't make any mistakes this deep in their own territory. Albany State now faced with a third and about five. Ball out to the seven-yard line. Charlie, Kentucky State continues to crowd the football, put nine men in the box, which puts your corners on an island, one-on-one -on -one with the receivers of Albany State. Andrews, the second back in the eye, and here's the quarterback option. Hosea Harris is going to keep it, trying to get to the first down marker. It looks like he did get enough. For the first down, he got across the 10 to the 12, and it'll be first and 10, Albany State. Hosea Harris, the quarterback, on the keeper, picks up the first down. Albany State has a very diverse playbook. You see him run a little option here. Nice job of creasing the defense and finding the running lane. Good job, though, Albany State mixing it up with a spread offense. They have a little option. They've run dive plays. Good job by that guy right there, Jose Harris. And they caught Robert Brown looking into the backfield, didn't they? Yeah. <laughs> this time, here's Atkins trying to go to the right side. Atkins breaks a tackle on the far side. And Atkins is finally knocked out of bounds in front of the Kentucky State bench. But not before he picked up another first down. Courtney Reed finally bumped him out of bounds. But another first down for the Golden Rams. The one thing that Atkins has, and you'll see it here, is good vision. He's able to find the running lanes. He's an electric player. You feel like every time he touches the ball, he's capable of hitting a home run. Nice job of finding the seam there and accelerating through contact. You really got to wrap him up. He's, he's very physical, and he runs well downhill. So penalty flag down as Atkins gets the ball. The referee dropped the flag this time, so we may have had some motion. Hope the refs are well conditioned because they're having a <laughs> workout in. Illegal, illegal shift. Five yards. Repeat first down. It was an illegal shift against the offense. So another penalty for Albany State. They were penalized four times in the first quarter. They've been penalized six times in the game. Remember, they're the second most penalized team in the conference. And they're holding two to form. Gotta get that cleaned up. Here's Andrews. Andrews turns the corner. Andrews across the 30. Put down at about the 40 yard line. 41, they're gonna call it. 42. Leonard Banks finally brought him down. And the NFL, that's a penalty this year. That bringing a player down from his. Uh, Shoulder pass from behind. The horse collar. That yeah, time, the horse <laughs> Andrews does a nice job. He sees nothing in the middle. It's clogged up. So he bounces it to the outside. He's fast enough to turn the corner. Good job of finding the running lane. There's the horse collar you're talking about, Charlie. Three straight first down plays for the Albany State Rams. Atkins. Out of bounds in front of his own bench, short side of the field. Not a lot of running room over there. Defense led by Terrell Henderson, number 49, on the stop. That's an interesting play call, running Atkins to the boundary. As you said, there's not a lot of running area. Usually you want to take Atkins and run him to the wide side of the field. I look for him to come back to that. Ball on the near hash mark. First down, make this second down, right? Second and seven after that gain of three. One to the short side of the field again on the option. Hosea Harris decides he's going to keep it, but uh, he's not going to get much there. <laughs> Charlie, that was well played by Kentucky State. Vaughan. They must have seen that in practice because option football is responsibility football. And that time, all the players on the Kentucky State defense, they held their responsibilities. 
and Albany State had nowhere to go with it. Tim Vaughn was the man who made the stop, number 13, senior out of St. Mary's High in Stockton, California. One of the returning starters, an English and philosophy major. Here we go again with Atkins going to the right side this time. Can't get to the first down marker because the swarm of the defense of the thoroughbreds of Kentucky State will not allow him to get there, and Leonard Banks led the swarm. Number 15. And we talked about running Atkins to the wide side of the field. Good job by the defense. Kentucky State's defense, they play well sideline to sideline, so it's going to be hard to run on them laterally. Now we get a holding penalty against the defense, um, against the Albany State. They had another penalty. That's their seventh of the ball game. Holding. And that penalty will be declined, so that'll bring up a punting situation. Of course, you don't want to give him an opportunity to pick up a first down by, by accepting it, right? Charlie, and that's where the quarterback, Jose Harris, has got to get his arms around the team, pull them together. We talked about... There's the hole right yeah, there. Yeah, there's the hole. Well, that's where your leader's got to step up, though. Get the guys all back on the same page. Stop the bleeding with all these penalties. The kick... The punt, fair catch signal for, and it's going to down, be down, downed, I should say, right at the 26-yard line. First down and 10 when we return. We're in the second quarter here in Albany, Georgia, this SIAC matchup. Kentucky State trailing by seven. Call 1-800-762-1701 for a free catalog. Back to Albany, Georgia. Charlie Neal, Chris Martin here. College football on ESPNU. SIC style. It's Kentucky State trailing. Albany State, 7-0. Kentucky State made a mistake, fumbled the ball. 52 seconds left here in the second quarter, which led to the Albany State touchdown. And there's a turnover situation. An interception and a fumble by Kentucky State. One fumble by Albany State. But the costly fumble by Kentucky State led to the seven points that Albany State has on the board right now. Kentucky State with the ball, first down and 10 at their own 26-yard line. Play action pass. Quarterback throws it out of backfield of the tight end, uh, the fullback, I should say, Nick Moore. And he has the second reception of the day. Been a kind of a sloppy game, uh, Chris, and uh, some of the miscues in this contest. On both sides of the ball here, you see the blind side hitting Jose Harris. And then there, Sean Johnson throws a nice little gift to the defensive back. Here, Harris just doesn't protect the ball. Causes a fumble. And lastly, Kentucky State coughs up the ball there that leads to a, a big touchdown for Albany State. That's where we stand. It's second down and two right now for Kentucky State. And they keep the ball with Anthony Roney Robinson carrying straight ahead. Pick up a one. It'll be third and one. Ball just shy of the 35-yard line. Maybe third and two. Didn't really pick up hardly any. Just about got back to the line of scrimmage. Right, Charlie, and that's because the defense for Albany State, they're pretty stout in the interior. They have some big guys up front that really just clog up the middle and diminish the running lanes. 9-17 before halftime. 7-0 our score here. High backfield. Roni Robinson, the second back behind Nick Moore. Play action. There's the pass. Great catch. Good adjustment on the ball. And coming up with the reception, I believe was, uh, what was that, number 11 coming up with it? Juwan Johnson. Jones, rather. Juwan Jones. Or did he catch it? Looked like he dropped it, Charlie. But here what we have is man-to-man -man coverage, so they convert the route to a fade. Yeah, he dropped it. Nice job of trying to come back. But the corner gets his hand in here and I think pulls it out. So what you saw there, Charlie, is Albany State manning up, playing a little bump and run at the line of scrimmage. Fourth punt of the day for Clark. Deep man is Brandon Green. Green with the ball. On his, a flag is down as it crossed the 30. And dropped at the 35-yard line, but there's a flag way back at the 24-yard line. Probably a clipping penalty. A 
referee has been busy. Illegal use of hands on the return team. That's Albany State. Watch the cover guy at the top right there. Oh, that's just blatant, Charlie. He was beaten by the flyer. And the flyer had a V line to the punt Locking returner, the so he pushes him in the back. Ten yards in the spot is foul. First down. So there's a timeout on the field. We're in the second quarter here in Albany, Georgia. Albany State with the ball, and they lead it seven to nothing. Football, Notre Dame battles Michigan. At 10, break down the latest football rankings on the U. ESPNU, always in season. A young fan here in Albany, Georgia, at the Albany Municipal Coliseum on Military Appreciation Day and also a tribute to those victims from 9-11 four years ago. First down at 10, Albany State. On the ground, they keep the ball, and again, it's Antoine Andrews on the carry. And Andrews picks up some pretty good yards, gains a first down across the 25 to about the 27. A gain of about 11 or 12 before Leonard Banks makes the stop defensively for the Kentucky State Thoroughbreds. Here's Brown. Brown comes up. He keeps contained here, but nice job of the, the back getting his hands on him and keeping him engaged to create a running lane. Brown's there. You know, he's their game buster, and he flies around. He makes plays all over the field. Andrews going to the right side this time, and he's tripped up before he could get ahead of steam going. You know, with this being the opening day of the NFL season, it's kind of appropriate that we are doing an SIC game. Eight players from the SIC conference are playing on NFL rosters starting the day. Albany State has Kenyon Nash from the Raiders. We talked earlier about the young man by the name of Curry, who was cut earlier by the Ravens. Uh, Fort Valley has three players, Mars Brown one, and Tuskegee three. So, you know, the SIC very well represented in the NFL. They have just great athletes, Charlie. Harris under pressure. He's going to be sacked. Third time today, he's been brought down by the Kentucky State defense. Abraham Jackson leading the way. And there's the opening day rosters from HBCUs. The SWAC has 18 along with the MEAC. And SIEC represented by eight, Independence five, CIAA unfortunately has no players in the NFL right now. Abraham Jackson, you see he's been making plays all day long. He's a great pass rusher. He also has the ability to drop back. You know, he has some interceptions on the year. In Albany State, they have to know where Jackson is every play. Because he's the guy wreaking havoc for Kentucky State. Well, they're going to take a timeout. That is Albany State. They don't have it all together. We were talking a little bit, not only about those in the NFL, but about the, the, the way that this team at Albany State has been depleted this year and how many players they lost. They lost 10 players who were all conference performers a year ago, five on the first uh, first team, including tight end Ed Harper, offensive lineman Rodney Maywood, defensive lineman Walter Curry. Uh, the offensive lineman Julius Colts and defensive line Jarvis Davis. They also had five from the second team all-conference squad who are missing. So only four returning starters from last year's team. And don't forget, next Thursday night, Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference football takes place right here on ESPNU. The Pirates of Hampton University. They have a pair of great running backs in Ardell Daniels and Alonzo Coleman. They rushed for over 1,000 yards between them a year ago. And they will take on the Aggies of North Carolina A&T, who have a pretty good running back of their own in Brandon Sweeney. It's this Thursday night, 7.30 p.m. Eastern, right here on ESPNU. For more information, log on to ESPNU.com. Third and 13 from the shotgun, Hosea Harris. Out of Chesapeake, Virginia. He got away from Hampton somehow. He said he just wanted to get out of the state. He lets it fly. Down the sideline. There's a man. A great battle between James Wilson down there and that young man, Marcus Wright. That time, Albany State just taking their shot. And you don't want to throw against Marcus Wright because he may be the best cover corner on this field today. You see Harris roll out. Now, this is just a fade route. So he's running down the field. Watch this recovery speed and play on the ball. Marcus Wright has great ball skills. And you see he attacks the football 
That's a heck of a play in man-to-man -man coverage. It certainly is, and he's back to return this punt. Fifth punt of the day. And it's a short kick. And it dies right at the midfield strike. Only a 16-yard punt for Albany State that time. And Matt Hawthorne, this is the first year he's actually punting. They had done a lot of punting uh, coming into this season because they had another young man who graduated from a year ago who he kind of was uh, sitting in the wings waiting for. <laughs> Interesting, going back to Marcus Wright, the coaches for Albany State said, look, we respect them, but we will still take our shots on them. I don't know if they'll come back to it, though. Midfield <laughs> is where Kentucky State, trailing 7 and nothing, has the ball. First down and 10. Play action. Letting it go. Down the sideline. Incomplete. Too far. Too big for the intended receiver way down there. And, Charlie, what we're seeing now, both teams, they're manning up. So the corners are on an island. And when you have that, you're going to take your chances down the field. That's Brandon Adams, that backup quarterback we talked about. Right. And he's their burner. He's their speed guy. When you get your corners one-on-one, -on -one, if I'm an offensive coordinator, I have to take my shots down the field. Second down and 10. 6.31 remaining. We're in the first half of play, second quarter. This time rolling to the opposite side, throws it too high. It sailed on him. You know, this is a left-handed quarterback rolling to the right. He couldn't get his body around to get it to where he wanted to, and it just took off on him. That's a great point, uh, Charlie. Run, rolling out to his right, not really what you want to do with a left-handed quarterback. He doesn't set his feet here, and that's why it was uh, an errant throw. That's a tough play for Johnson to make. Usually you want to roll him out to his left. He's throwing against his body. That led to an errant throw. Talking to Coach Faria, as you look at Mike White over there last night, he said, you know, I tried to tell these kids there's no shortcut to success. Success is about you, not about the other team. I don't worry about what they do. If we do what we're supposed to do, we'll be all right. He's absolutely right. Third down. A little play action, and he won't get this one away. The blue death defense, or the dirty blue defense, as they like to be called, and coach said they're ahead of the curve, led by Alton Petway. Right there, he's number 91, comes in with the sack. Charlie, what you're going to see here is just a speed rush. He beats the tackle like a drum. You, you would have thought he was a statue, but that shows you how fast Petway is coming off the ball. He is a speed rusher, a quick first step. Good job reeling in the quarterback. They lost four yards on that drive, and they'll punt it away. Petway has made plays all over the field today. Fifth punt of the afternoon by Clark. And he just gets this one off. This will be Brandon Green on the return from the 11. Green cuts it back. And Green is going to be down right at about the 24-yard line. There's a timeout on the field. 5.20 is the time remaining. We're here in Albany, Georgia for this SIAC matchup with Albany State leading. From their own 24-yard line, eighth possession of the day for the Rams of Albany State with 5.28 to go in the first half and leading 7-0. Hosea Harris has his team set. He wants to pass on first down. High, snap, high pass, and it goes in and out of the hands. Trying desperately to make the catch was Joshua Johnson. He went high for it, but the throw was even high. You know it's got to be a high throw because Johnson's 6'4". And he stretched out his body but couldn't get to it. He was he had the defensive back turned on that slant route. If he hits him in the numbers, Harris, I think Johnson's still running. You're correct. Second down, 10. Don't forget to stay with us at halftime. A special treat to bands along with a couple of uh, VIP guests will be situation. You see Harris. Harris looks to pass first, then run. Everybody's covered. He sees a running lane and takes off. You know, he is a passer. He is not a thrower. A thrower is someone who will tuck the ball down in most situations and run. Harris will only run if he has to. Marcus Wright. 
Next it bounce, and it'll die at the 36. So that's where Kentucky State will go to work. First down and 10 at their own 36-yard line. You know, the SIC, right now, they have a 10-team conference in terms of, of uh, football is concerned. Well, next year, they're going to go to an east-west format. Uh, with football and basketball in the east will be Albany State Benedict Clark Atlanta Fort Valley Morehouse and Payne in the west It'll be Kentucky State Lane Lamorne Owen Miles Stillman and Tuskegee And that's the way the standings are right now with Kentucky State 1-0 Albany State 1-1 one and, one, and that loss to To uh, Valdosta which counts as a conference loss a week ago Hangs big right now. Here's a pitch back to the left side and Keep the ball on the ground this time. Running with it for Kentucky State was Roney Robinson, number four. Charlie, they're digging in the playbook. They came back to the option that time into the boundary. Good job of pitching off to the back by Sean Johnson. So now you can play for a conference championship with the East West format. You can have a championship game right now. We got a Penalty flag. Legal substitution against Kentucky State. Somebody probably came in after they broke the huddle, and that's why the illegal substitution. And these are the types of things that new programs and new types of uh, philosophies from coaches you have to get used to. And one of the things I know Mike White said to us yesterday was, you know, his concern is this team being consistent. Mm -hmm. Doing the same thing the way it's supposed to be done day after day after day, game after game. It takes a while, Charlie, to build synergy on the team. Nothing happening there. Cedric Boone was there defensively to clog up the hole. He's the nose tackle. Freshman out of America's Georgia. We thought that maybe he wouldn't play a lot because of uh, there is Mr. Boone, number 90, because of a, a arch injury that he has suffered. I think what jumps out me most so far are these defensive ends on both teams and their ability to get up the field and put pressure on the quarterback. These guys are unbelievably quick for how big they are. Third and nine. Play action. Well, they fake Petway. And this one is a little bit too far from the outstretched hands of the intended receiver. That's Derek Talbert, number 31. Charlie, the play was there. Johnson does a nice job of selling the fake, sure did. which holds his linebackers. You'll see it here. Great job of selling the fake. And he'll have his receiver running on a dig route. He's right open, just off the fingertips. It's interesting, though, again, they continue to roll Johnson out to his right, which makes it a difficult throw for a left-handed quarterback. 3.13 remaining, fourth and nine, and running situation for Clark. Blocked. Picked up. And then sit back. And let's see who has it. We have two change of possessions. Kentucky State may have it back. First down and 10. They do. Charlie, that is one for the blooper video. <laughs> Can you believe that one? <laughs> you don't turn it over. And see, that's discipline. Why would you lateral it back? You had the ball at the inside the 20-yard line. And Leonard Banks came up with it. He was the savior for Kentucky State. The kick was blocked. Let's watch it. Good job coming off the edge and taking the ball off the foot. I don't know where he, whoa, I don't know where he's looking to pitch the ball. You have the ball inside the red zone. There you go. Oh. I mean, because the, the man he pitched it to wasn't waiting for it. That was Marcus Jefferson. The man who blocked it was Brandon, was, I should say, number three, James Wilson. Here's a pitch to the right side. Here's Chambers. So a change of events there. <laughs> First down and 10. Coach White has got to be steaming over that play. I mean, you have the ball inside the red zone. Giving your team an opportunity to put more points on the board. And then you you try to take it on your own self and pitch it back. You just go down with the football. Play smart football. 
that time just an ill-advised play. So we had two change of possessions on this theme play. The block punt. Albany State picks it up. Kentucky, they tried to lateral it, and Kentucky State recovers the fumble, and they get the ball back. Rolling to the left, Sean Johnson, Petway chasing. Outside the pocket, it goes incomplete, and it'll be third down. There's Petway, he's been everywhere, hasn't he? He has been everywhere. And it's kind of what we were talking about before with Petway. I mean, Sean Johnson is 180 pounds, and watch Petway come and reel him in here and the right side of your screen. He is a speed guy. Look at him. I mean, keep in mind, this is a 265-pound kid. Did you say he could play on Sundays? He will be playing on Sundays. Not only this Sunday, but that. a lot of Sundays. Yeah. <laughs> Good things to come for Petway. He's got a motor, but he has speed, too. A minute 45 left in the half. Third down. Fumble! <laughs> Petway comes out with the ball. Charlie, Petway has brought his cape today because he is Superman. And it seems like he is just in the right spot. You see him fight off the block here. We talked about his motor. He has great instincts. He sees the ball on the ground. That is the Superman for Albany State. So, Albany State gets the ball back after... They miscue a few plays earlier, and they have a chance with a minute 38 to go. As you look at Petway's numbers today, a sack, a couple, a two fumble recoveries already just today alone. That's a season for some people. It is a season. It shows you that he's always around the ball. And good things come when you're around the football. At the Albany, at the Kentucky State 13, and pass is caught by Joshua Johnson. And Joshua takes it down to the six-yard line, where to be first and goal, Albany State. Charlie, this is a good play call here. Joshua Johnson, he's a big body, so what you want to do is you throw him up on a drag route because he can body the defensive back and shield him with that size. Excellent play call, good pitch and catch there by let's, Harris. Let's see if this turnover results in more points for Albany State. This is a pitch into the corner of the end zone and it's incomplete. He was intended it for number nine, Antonio Ivey, the Thomasville, Georgia junior down there. A lot of teams like to run corner routes when they get inside the red zone. That time, Jose Harris taking a shot in the corner. Good play by McCray up top. Second and goal. Antoine Andrews, the only setback behind the quarterback, Harris. The handoff to Andrews, who has a touchdown already today. He falls forward to the three. It'll be third and goal. Andrews scored on a two-yard run with 22 seconds left in the first quarter. Now with just over a minute, a minute and two to be exact here in the second quarter. Albany State threatening once again, thanks to a miscue by the thoroughbreds of Kentucky State. Well, what we're seeing, Charlie, is the importance of turnovers and creating turnovers. And for Albany State, they've gotten the ball in good inside the red zone twice now off of turnovers. Five turnovers between the two teams, and there you look at Mr. Petway there, the man who recovered the last fumble. Let's he look is, at what he's done to He's been all over the field. That way, running down Sean Johnson here, jumping on the ball on a fumble recovery here off the edge, getting a sack on Johnson. Unbelievable motor, watch him run him down, and then Petway here finding the ball again. He is an incredible athlete. And he's got a motor that just won't stop. Junior from Bay Minette, Alabama. Right now, third and goal for Albany State. Hosea Harris on the option. Pitches back to Atkins. Atkins is dropped for a one-yard loss. And it'll bring up fourth down and goal. And Marcus Wright was the man that came up to make the stop defensively. That was right. That was about as well as you can play the option football if you're a cornerback. 24 on 24. Watch it. We'll get a shot of it here. Watch him come up and take the pitch man. And this is a great open field tackle. Again, when you have option football, you have to stay with your assignment. And Wright's assignment is to take the running back. Excellent job of coming up and making a play. 
on fourth and goal. It looks like Albany State may be going for it, but there's five seconds left on the play clock, so they better hurry up if they're going to get this one off. Now they call a timeout. Maybe they were letting the clock run down, too. I'm sure they were. 15 seconds. Gives the time remaining. Let's not rush this thing, right? <laughs> Mike White. He's been through the wars, you know? And you know what's so ironic? We talked about the history of Albany State and their previous coach before Mike White took over, which is a young man by the name of Hamp Smith. Hamp Smith. You know, they won a lot of titles, this uh, S, uh, this uh, Albany State team, as far as the SIEC is concerned. They won five straight under Hamp Smith between 93 and 97. They also won in the 80s. And they would win at, at a rate of three or four championships of five in a row. They wouldn't have any breaks in between. When we talked to Mike White yesterday. He says, we talked about that at the beginning of the season. And we want to continue that type of domination where we win back to back to back to back championships in the SIEC. And that's how you build tradition, Charlie. Mike White knows that they can build tradition here at Albany State, but they got to continue to pull out big victories. So they're going to go for a 22-yard field goal now. This time from Matt Hawthorne, who was two of three in field goals so far this year. He had a 33-yarder against Miles. He also missed a 27-yarder. Now we have a delay of game penalty against Albany State, I should say Kentucky State. So it's still fourth down, I believe. I'm just going to move it to half the distance to the goal line, move it a little bit closer. So this will be a 20, make it a 19-yard field goal, or make it a 20. They're going to mark it right at the 10. It'll be a 20-yard field goal for Matt Hawthorne. He had a 22-yarder last week against Valdosta. This one is up, and it's truly upright, and this one is good. So it's a 10-0 ball game. Albany State has taken advantage of two miscues by Kentucky State to put 10 points on the board. And every time they fire that cannon off here, people don't know what's going on. <laughs> I even saw Dr. Lyde, the commissioner. He was jumping. <laughs> <laughs> Look out. <laughs> Watch out now. 13 seconds, the time remaining. 22 seconds left in the first quarter. Albany State scored. 13 seconds left in the second. Hawthorne hits the 20-yard field goal. Coach Farrier again trying to circle the wagons and get his team back together. And I think when he pulls them in at halftime, he got to say, look, guys, we're just not making the plays when we need to, and we can't continue to turn the ball over. And you talk about the, the two scores. We talked about Petway. The two scores that Albany State put on the board was a result of Petway's fumble recoveries. He just has a nose for the ball. And it seems like every time you see one of their defenders, Albany State, making a big play, it's Petway. There's Matthew Hawthorne. I bet he doesn't get another delay of game penalty for changing shoes. <laughs> I think he's got it right now. <laughs> Low kick. Right on the return. Marcus Wright trying to get to the sideline. Marcus Wright still on his feet. He really needs to think about getting out of bounds. <laughs> now with four seconds to go, he had some good return yards, but he didn't give his team any good field position in terms of uh, time for his, the clock running. Is the band from Kentucky State getting ready for the halftime, the marching thoroughbreds, and we'll also see the marching Rams show band at halftime. So stay with us for our halftime activities right here on the U. Right now it's a 10-0 Albany State lead with two seconds to go before halftime over Kentucky State. Coach Fryer yesterday talked about Big Ben. I wonder if he takes a shot at the end zone here. Well, you don't have anything to lose. He's going to run from the shotgun, and Sean Johnson is there, but you've got a couple people playing center field back there. You don't let anybody get behind you in this situation. Just hope any linemen don't go down for you. Well, He's just going to have to let it go. He's going to go out of bounds. He's going to save the day. <laughs> and there's your guy again <laughs> applying the pressure. All right. Always. They tie the shoe. They get it ready. Coach Faria's team and the Rams 
are ahead at halftime. It's 10 to nothing. The Golden Rams have taken advantage of miscues by Kentucky State. We'll be back. There's some of the NFL's biggest stars, and they emerge from the best kept secret in college football, historically black colleges and universities. ESPNU is proud to present HBCU football. Every week, experience the competition, the marching band, and the excitement that is HBCU football. Watch Hampton take on North Carolina A&T Thursday at 7.30 Eastern, only on ESPNU. Here in Albany, Georgia, where the Albany State Rams are leading Kentucky State by a score of 10 to nothing. And I have the pleasure of having with me here at halftime, Dr. Julia Scott, the interim president of Albany State. And, Doc, it's always a pleasure back with more halftime activities from Albany, Georgia, in just a moment. Welcome back to Albany, Georgia. We're at halftime. It's Albany State and Kentucky State. Charlie Neal along with Chris Martin. And Chris, while we have a moment, let's take a look back at the players of the week from the various HBCU conferences and see how they fared a week ago, starting with the CIAA with Eddie Montgomery from St. Augustine's College was the receiver of the week with three receptions, 158 yards, and a pair of touchdowns, and that went over Shaw. In fact, St. Augustine's College took three of the four player of the week honors, while Ronald Walls, the freshman place kicker from Bowie State, nailed a 27-yard field goal that came with two seconds left as they beat Johnson C. Smith in that contest. And then Miak on offense, Ardell Daniels, junior running back for Hampton, got loose, 22 rushes for 109 yards and two touchdowns. On defense, Edward Piner, the junior defensive tackle at Howard, had a big day, six tackles, two assists, one of eight sacks on the day. The special teams award goes to Peter Gardner, the junior place kicker for Delaware State. He kicked four field goals in a win over FAMU. And then the rookie, Travis Rowland, sophomore out of Bethune-Cookman College. Big day, eight solo tackles, three stacks, and two assists in a win over Elizabeth City State. On the Southwestern Athletic Conference side, we have Ares Nelson, the quarterback from Mississippi Valley, a big day in their win over Arkansas Pine Bluff, while defensively Justin Bass from Arkansas Pine Bluff, 13 tackles in their loss to Mississippi Valley, while the freshman place kicker from Alabama A&M, Jose Osorio, was the special teams player of the week and the newcomer of the week in the SWAC. The honor went to Harold Dorman, the freshman quarterback from Alabama A&M. And lastly, in this... SEAC Conference on offense. Adrian Johnson had a big day. 6 for 12, 143 yards, two touchdowns, and a win over Miles. And on defense, Titus Curdy, a junior linebacker for BC. Seven tackles, three solo, one forced fumble, one fumble recovery. And the newcomer award goes to Eric Crosby, junior linebacker for Albany State. Big day, nine tackles, two solo, one TFL. And then on special teams, Tony Mathis, the senior. Uh, Returned four punts for 21-yard average. Big day for him. Well, let's look at some of the scores from yesterday. Some big games, especially in the SIAC, where Tuskegee continues to roll. They're ranked 11th in Division II. They beat Miles, lane over Fort, or loses to Fort Valley, while Stillman knocks off Morehouse. It was Benedict, the winner over Johnson C. Smith, while Clark Atlanta got by Texas College by a couple of points. More scores, Hampton over Howard University in the MEAC. Norfolk State loses to North Carolina a and by two. Delaware State comes up big at home against Millersville. Bethune-Cookman over Arkansas Pine Bluff. Edward Waters loses at home to Shaw. Mississippi Valley comes up with a big win. Kind of an upset there in the SWAC over Southern University, 31-28 down at Itabina, Mississippi. And we'll be back with more halftime activities from Albany, Georgia in just a moment. The Marching Rams Showman from Albany State, Georgia, and Albany State University. Albany State leading 10 to nothing. We're here at halftime and had the pleasure of having Dr. Phil Lyde, the commissioner of the S.
10 to nothing is our score here at halftime here in Albany, Georgia, where the Golden Rams of Albany State lead the thoroughbreds of Kentucky State. A couple of mistakes by uh, Kentucky State have led to this Albany State windfall, I guess, if you want to say 10 to nothing. Charlie Neal along with Chris Martin here in Albany, Georgia. And Chris, look at the first half. Your thoughts right now? Well, I think the Albany State defense, they continue to create turnovers. And it's opportunistic turnovers within the red zone in which their offense in turn came back and capitalized on them. Their defense is flying around. They're making mm -hmm. plays and really putting their offense in a position to score. Well, you talk about those uh, mistakes that uh, Kentucky State made that helped uh, Albany State in the first half. Let's look at some of those first half highlights and some of those miscues and see how it all played out. Well, here you'll see Petway recovering a fumble early on. They're able to punch that in with Andrews there on the dive play. And you'll see Petway again with a nose for the ball, just creating a lot of turnovers, which leads to a field goal for Albany State. And then that's what happens when you keep scoring. They launch the cannon. Well... As of course, the first half statistics, when you look at the X's and O's and what happened here, first down situation, you look at uh, the, the uh, it's pretty even. Well, I should say even Albany State has an advantage there. But where the, the, the big glaring error there is there are no rushing yards for Kentucky State. They have had problems putting the ball and moving yards on the ground. Well, and I think they're rattled with the Albany State defense that continues to get up field. Sean Johnson does not seem to be comfortable at all inside in the pocket or getting flushed out. He's having a tough day. He's got to settle down, get command of the offense, and methodically work his way down the field. And then the turnovers doesn't help the situation at all. Well, the turnovers, but opportunistic turnovers, getting turnovers inside the red zone. And look, let's look at the first half leaders. There you see Sean Johnson. He's 5 of 14, 27 yards. Chambers has rushed the ball seven times for 14, more with a couple of catches for 11 yards. But on the other side, Andrews with 13 rushes, 63 yards. Atkins, 53. So you see the running game has uh, favored the dynamic duo from Albany State. It has, and they're like, you know, thunder and lightning. Andrews is good running between the tackles. Atkins is good when he can bounce it outside. Collectively, though, they're tough to stop. Well, there you go, Albany State. They're getting ready to start the second half. They will kick the ball off to Kentucky State. To, and Kentucky State, uh, of course, won the toss at the beginning of the game. Deferred, decided they were going to uh, get the ball in the second half and go on defense to start the ball game. And Charlie, Kentucky State, they've got to get something going here right out the gates. And again, their offense has sputtered all day long, mainly due to the pressure that's been put on by the Albany State interior linemen. So there you go, Matt Hawthorne has the ball on the tee, and he's about to kick it off to start the second half. Deep man has been Marcus Wright. He's been doing a pretty good job as far as a kick returner is concerned. I guess the most glaring stat from the first half is six penalties against Albany State. Nine, uh, 60 yards in the first half. And here's Marcus Wright. Marcus Wright turns it upfield, breaks it to the outside, dances back, but he's going to go out of bounds in front of his own bench right at about the 40-yard line. So that's where we'll start the second half with Kentucky State, first down and 10. Last three games... The opponent has scored a touchdown in the first possession of the second half against Albany State. And that's one of the things that you heard uh, Dr. Scott at halftime, or Dr. Lyde, I should say, at halftime, talking about the fact that when they played Valdosta State last year, they were ahead in the 1AA playoffs by a score 24 0 at halftime. And they let them come back, and they lost that game. I believe it was 38 24 was the final. So. Again, you can't allow teams to get back in the ball game, and that's what Albany State has done. And this one is off the hands of Talbert. He had it. He was looking upfield before he caught the ball. Charlie, you're absolutely right about Albany State. Once you have a team on the ropes, you got to knock them out. Sean Johnson, again, as I said at halftime, he does not look comfortable in the pocket, largely due to the pressure by the Albany State defensive line. He's got to settle down, move around, take his shots when they're there, but otherwise, just get command of this offense and get into a comfort zone and rhythm. Second down and 10. 
Douglas is the man in motion, number 12. Flag is down. May have had too many people moving at the same time. This one will go against Kentucky State. Illegal motion. Illegal shift. One offense. Yep. Five yards. Repeat second down. Charlie, that's got to just crush Coach Fire. He's such a well-organized, thought-out, overly prepared coach. And then when you see these mental mistakes, that's really got to be eating at him right now. Second down, 15. We talked about the fact that he had gotten a lot of the discipline and work ethic, not only from his father, but from Nick Saban when he coached with him at Michigan State. You know, one of the players he coached there, Baxico Barris, oh. was one of the players that Coach Faria coached at Michigan State. So he had some good ones there. On second down and 15. The pass is complete for about three yards. And on the receiving end is Zach Davis. He's the tight end, a sophomore, big 6'3", 235, kid from Ashland, Kentucky. You see Sean Johnson slide over here. He's, he's not getting comfortable back there in the pocket. You see Pedway right here. He's getting double teamed. They're trying to help out with the back. A little holding there on the shoulder pad. You know, they got to put two players on Petway. That's how busy he's been today. Third and 13 for Kentucky State. And there's Petway today. Six tackles, a sack, and a couple fumble recoveries that led to scores for his team, the Golden Rams. Making a lot of highlight reels today, Charlie. Let's go. Get back. Get back. Get up. Let's go. Let's go. The problem with trying to roll left and throw the ball is he couldn't get his feet set once again. And again, coming in is Franklin Turner putting Charlie, the pressure on the, on the quarterback. Excuse me, Charlie, you hit that on the head too. Rolling to the right, he cannot get his feet set. And it's a long way for him to roll as he rolls to the field. I, I think you got to take that play out the playbook. <laughs> So they started at their own 40 and went backward, kicking from their own 29. So they lost 11 yards on that drive. And again, like you said, the running game non-existent. The passing game is having problems here. And here's the kick by Clark. And it is fielded. Here's Green, Brandon Green, and they up across the 45 to about the 47 yard line. Finally brought down Brandon Adams, the backup quarterback, down on special teams. Number nine to make the stop. You love to see that when your, your quarterback's willing to run down the field and make a play. Uh, Brandon Adams, he's just a guy, he has to be on the field. I mean, no matter where you put him, he's going to show up and play. First down and 10, Kentucky State on defense now. Albany State gets the ball for the first time here in the second half. Hosea Harris, who's led the team all the way from the shotgun on first down. Ball is tipped at the line of scrimmage. Big number 67 got his hands on it. That's Abraham Jackson. And the, key, the key to that play, Charlie, is when you have three-step drop or short passes. If you're a defensive lineman, you're taught to get your arms up because you're going to have a lower trajectory on the ball. A lot of times it leads to tip balls. Redirection, we saw it there. You know, Hosea Harris was recruited four years ago as a starter, but because of other people in front of him, he didn't start. Here's Barber, and he holds on inside the 15 at the 11-yard line. Goes Craig Barber on the reception. Terrell Henderson covering downfield, number 49, but a big... Big pass play. Well, and the key that time is they stretch the field wide. You see, he's right on the boundary there. The safety, Henderson, just doesn't get over the top, and he's running in trail. Good job of the receiver coming back to the ball. But again, the key is to use the field and stretch it, get a receiver going up the boundary. Excellent play call. 
And the thing is, that's not his longest pass reception of the year. His longest was 58 yards. He did that against Miles. I want to bring in a special guest. He was supposed to join us at halftime, but I know he had trouble getting through the crowd here. And this is Hedrick McDuffie from Kentucky State. He's the ex vice president of external relations and development. And uh, it's, it's a pleasure having you here, first of all. And uh, to talk a little bit about Kentucky State and what's happening with all the transition and changes you've had. You've got some new coaches come in. I mean, there's a lot of things happening that it's all good in Frankfurt. Uh, everything is good in Frankfurt. Under the leadership of our president, Dr. Mary Ellen Size, we uh, have record enrollment this year, over 2,386 students. Uh, our programs are vibrant, especially our aquaculture program. Mm -hmm. And everything is really uh, fine. And what we're really concerned about and what we're working with are our sister institutions that have suffered from the disaster and we want to know we get the word out that our doors are open we're offering uh, free tuition and housing for students that enroll or come to Kentucky State University during this time of, of need. Well you have some, some great schools down in New Orleans in, in terms of HBCUs when you talk about uh, Southern University New Orleans campus mm -hmm. along with Dillard and Xavier University and I'm sure they're very happy to hear that. Stay with us Doc here we're going to talk about what's going on in the field we've got a second down facing Kentucky State I should say Albany State rather second down and uh, about three yards to go for first down but uh, the ball is back at the four yard line what in terms of your status in your position how is your relationship at the Kentucky State between uh, the foundations the corporations and the alumni Oh, well, we had a banner year last year, raised over $1.2 million, and we are now going through a challenge program with our alumni in terms of fundraising. So our relationship with the foundation, uh, the Kentucky State University Foundation, and the uh, corporate community and community is very strong. Well, that's very, very important, mm -hmm. isn't it? When you talk about the, the, the status of, of black college athletics and... and in general, the enroll, student enrollment, where where do you see it at, to, today? Well, I think especially, take for instance our conference, that's ISC, and you can see the movement and activity that we're having in terms of uh, the exposure, more corporate sponsorship, and uh, the student athletes. The student athletes are progressing well, doing very good academically. Did our survey and our student athletes, uh, especially uh, in our program, uh, has a grade point average overall of over three points. So we're <laughs> very pleased with that. Well, Dr. McDuffie, it's great uh, for you to come by and spend some time with us. Good luck to your Kentucky State program. Coach Faria, I'm sure you're very pleased with, with him coming yeah. on board this year. And they, they just had a great defensive stand down there near the goal line with their backs against the wall in the red zone. And we're, we're coming back. <laughs> All, right. All right. Thank you. All right. Dr. Thank McDuffie, you. Dr. Henford McDuffie, yeah. Vice President of External Relations and Development for Kentucky State University, joining us here in the booth. First down and 10 after uh, Albany State drove from their own 48 to the Kentucky State 5 but was unable to, to punch it in. And now Kentucky State with the ball with first down and 10. Give credit to Kentucky State's defense too for tightening the screws in the red zone and, and standing up and making a play. And they pick up a yard on the play. Second down, we'll call it nine, or they may call it, let's see, they, they started this drive, they have to stick right at the five-yard line, so it's a gain of one, close to two. Second down, Roney Robinson is back there. Here's a long pass. Well, that came close to being intercepted. It hung out there a long time. Marcus Jefferson, he was he was just waiting for it because he said, I'm not going to let Juwan Jones catch this. <laughs> it was almost like a punt. The ball spent so much time in the air, but again, an ill-advised throw uh, by Sean Johnson, but he continues to kind of, he's, he's pressured, and so he's not able to set his feet and get anything on the ball as a result. He's throwing a lot of inadvised in passes. Coming into the game, the uh, Kentucky State thoroughbred was, uh, Thoroughbreds were ranked second in the SIC in scoring offense. They were averaging 26 points a game. They've been shut out so far here for the first two and a half quarters. 
And look who's in there, Petway. Boy, he created havoc, didn't he? Number 91, he's all over the field. Watch Charlie, him. what you will see here is an NFL-type play. Watch Petway. He comes up, he looks at the pitch, and then he reacts and retraces and is able to get up the field. The interesting thing about that is he's the read man. When you see him come up the field, then you pitch it. But he's good enough that he can retrace, and he's fast enough that he can still tackle the back in the backfield. If Incredible. He if he keeps playing like this, he's got to be a candidate for the Harlan Hill Trophy. That's the Division II equivalent to the Heisman. And a, only one defensive player has ever won that award in the history of the award. On the return this time is Green, and Green gets to the sideline, and he gets down to the 28-yard line, and he's driven back. But a great return and great field position, but we got roughing the kicker against Albany State, so another penalty. And let's watch it once again on Chase uh, Clark. Uh, let's see, Harris was the punter that time, number 19. <laughs> We'll get a shot of it here, Charlie. He lays out for it, and when he rolls, he catches the punter's leg. He blocked one earlier th today. That is number three, Wilson. James Wilson, he blocked one earlier. But right now, they've given him new life. That's costing. Charlie, that's why you're taught to take the ball off the punter's foot instead of lay out. Oh, they're going to kick it. They, they didn't get a first down. It's a five-yard penalty, so they're going to re-kick. Brandon Green had gotten the last punt return back to the 28 of Kentucky State. Let's see if the penalty helps Kentucky State or if it helps if Albany State can retain. High snap. Here they come again. This one goes off the side of his foot. Green with the return, and he's knocked out of bounds at the 41-yard line. Timeout on the field. 10 to nothing. 9-21, the time remaining. We're in the third quarter. Albany State, so far, has held serve at home. Defense being very stingy for Kentucky State. Yeah, we see thunder and lightning that time. Andrews up the middle. Come back to Atkins on a bounce play. Good job holding him out of the end zone. And Atkins trying to get around the corner. But he stops him short. And the ball goes over. That was on a fourth and four situation. Kentucky State. And there you're looking at big number 67, Abraham Jackson. Junior out of Ellenwood, Georgia. Cedar Grove High is where he matriculated from. It is first down and 10. Here's Hosea Harris back to pass. Albany State looking right. Plenty of time. Throws it high for Barber. And we get a flag. It's probably going to be holding in the backfield by the referee. He called it. Yeah, Greg you, Edwards. He did have a lot of time back there. Usually when you have holding calls. So even though the pass was complete, did he say 74? Was it Reynolds? Probably on the right side there, right off your screen. Probably, or maybe 54. Tough to tell from that angle. But I like the call, though. They were looking to go deep there, try and put a ball in the end zone. Nine penalties against Albany State today. 75 yards. It's not a stat any team is proud of. <laughs> Atkins, the lone setback. Happy feet. Here goes the quarterback. Bumped down from behind by guess who? Abraham Jackson, 67. But I like what Harris did there. He went through all his reads and his progression. He's not looking to get out of there. He's running out of necessity. And that's what you want to see from your quarterback. Go through all your reads, all your checks. If nothing's there, tuck the ball in and run. Tim Vaughn, number 13, also there to make sure he didn't get any more yards. It is second and 14. Swing pass to Atkins behind the line of scrimmage. He's going backward. And he's not going to get away from the far side of the field. Over there to make the stop defensively was Daryl Sims, number 50. 
Daryl Sims, the middle line or inside linebacker from Moreno Valley, California. They went backward on that play. I think the defense is figuring out when Atkins in the game, they're going to run stretch plays, trying to get him on the perimeter, or they're going to try and, you know, run a little pass play or a short flat route. But they really want to work him to the perimeter. They lost about seven yards on that play. That was a third and 14, and now it's, uh, I mean, second and 14. Now it's third and 21. Flag is down. Catch made by Barber. And he has shy of the first down by about five yards, but let's see what the flag is all about. The umpire threw it, so it's probably in the vicinity of holding. It is. The 10th penalty or 11th? I'm not sure. I'm losing count. Yeah, you and me both. Chris Chapman is the man we've got the camera on there from Natchez, Mississippi. They said this one's on 74, Yancey Reynolds, the junior from Dublin, Georgia. There he is, coming in at 330 pounds. That line is big. I mean, Chapman comes in at 335, Reynolds at 330. Probably one of the smallest guys up front will be uh, your center, Mike Livingston. He comes in at about 250. Charlie, they're well conditioned, though. You know, Albany State started off early with the no huddle. These guys are in great shape. Yeah. 300 pounds. Third and 31. A lot of real estate to cover now. Hosea Harris lets it fly. And it's too big for anybody. Nobody's going to get this one, including the intended receiver, Brandon Green, who, by the way, cousin is Daryl Green, the former Washington Redskins, so you know he can fly. Yeah, he's, he's another track guy. And that time, Albany State just taking a wing and a prayer. The old rule, though, is you don't want to throw a post route with a safety sitting in the hole, and that's why we had double coverage on that play. So a punting situation. This drive started at their own 42 and punting from their own 32. I, mean, I should say the Kentucky State 42 punting from their own 32. Not a good punt this time for Matt Hawthorne. It'll be down right at about the 38-yard line. So Kentucky State, which is trailing 10 to nothing, needs to get some offense going. Time running out. We're in the third quarter, and we'll be back. In Albany, Georgia, this SIC matchup here on ESPNU. Charlie Neal along with Chris Martin, and, and these two teams met a year ago. It was 42-7 to the final. Albany State won it over in Frankfort, Kentucky. Right now, it's 10-0, and we have another penalty flag down. Having a tough time running the ball in the middle with the interior lineman for Albany State clogging up the middle. There's no running lanes. You know, teams or players offsides on the defense, another penalty against Albany State. Teams like to get a lot of airtime of players when they're on TV. This is the officials' airtime day, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> They have been busy, Charlie. Rod Cummings whistled or flagged for being offsides. Linebacker, sophomore from Macon, Georgia. And it's first and five now for Kentucky State. They have only been across midfield once today. That was early in the first half. They got to the Albany State 45. That's as close as they've been. The pass thrown away. Petway got through two people on this one. You know, I keep talking about him and this this Harlan Hill award. I mean, he is playing like a man possessed today. If he keeps this up, like I said, the rest of the season, this Harlan Hill award started back in 1986, and everybody who's won that has been an offensive player except one guy was a linebacker who won it in 1995, and most of the recipients have been quarterbacks. But I'll tell you, this guy... <laughs> He's, he's just amazing. Well, Charlie, he has instincts, and you can't teach that. And at the next level, that's what they look for. Players that have the instincts. Play action for Johnson. This one incomplete. Receiver didn't hold on. Derek Talbert, number 31. He had four catches against Clark Atlanta for 24 yards. He's had a couple of opportunities today, but haven't been able to hold on. Charlie, you know, if I'm Coach Ferry, I'm wondering, where do I go from here? 
The offense is sputtered. The quarterback, Johnson, is not comfortable in the pocket. We're not having any success running the ball. We've been bottled up. How do I create a spark? Well, they go to play, go home and play Central State next week. That's, <laughs> that's what you do. And then the spark is going to be, they, he, he applied for a job at Central State. They told him he was too young. He was 30 years old at the time. He is 33 now. Here's Sean Johnson. Flag is down, maybe holding. And this one is overthrown. Intended downfield for Jawan Jones, holding against Kentucky State. There's going to be a lot of running after practice. Yeah, I'm and it's going to be a long bus ride back, I'll tell you. <laughs> maybe may, may run all the way back that 600 miles to Frankfort, Kentucky, up 75. We may not let them take the bus. <laughs> Octavius Williams, the left guard, the junior from Winter Garden, Florida, right outside of Orlando. Transfer from Moorhead State, who turned 22 years old today, and uh, he was whistled and flagged for holding that time. Not the present that he wanted for his birthday, I'm sure. I think with Kentucky State, though, their offensive line, they're still trying to gel. I mean, these guys haven't played in a whole lot of games together. I think that's causing some of these penalties. Third and 15. 388. 388. Incomplete. Near sideline. Again, Jones, the intended receiver. Marcus Jefferson, the 5'10 junior from Eatonton, Georgia, covering defensively. And there you look at Petway. He's been the man, there's no doubt, on the defensive side of the ball for Mike White and his dirty blue defense today. 11 and 1, 8 and 0 oh was the record for Albany State a year ago. Deep man for Albany State. New return man is Sage Glasper, freshman from Savannah, Georgia. He feels it. Trying to get to the outside. So the freshman gets a little work today. There's a timeout on the field. 10 to nothing is still our score. Good crowd here for Sunday afternoon in Albany, Georgia. And we'll be back in a moment. Remaining third quarter, 10 nothing our score here. Albany State in control so far and they lead it 10 to nothing over the visitors from frankfort kentucky i'm charlie neal along with chris martin glad you could join us here on this sunday afternoon in albany georgia for this division two siac matchup a lot of penalties in both teams uh, for both teams and there you see the total yards albany state has controlled that part of the ball game so far and they pick up some more yards this time with antoine andrews running the ball there he is big kid at six foot 180 pounds a senior he's from brunswick georgia they call him the rock he's built like a rock hard to bring down you really got to wrap him up gain of six second and four oh on the 45 here he is again andrews trying to turn the corner and he's dragging people with him he drug about four defenders for an extra two or three yards he is a load as i said he's a big physical back so what you have to do you have to run through contact right there now wrap him up i mean you you want to be the hammer you don't want to be the nail <laughs> there's no question about that and he comes off limping a little bit and antonio atkins comes back in to the lineup maybe a little ankle spring there. Here's Atkins reversing his field. And he just tripped up. Who just, who was that just got a hand on him? That was number 49, Terrell Henderson. The linebacker from Hazelcrest, Illinois. From your part of the country, Chris. Trying to work a little magic. Watch this spin move, a little pirouette. Oh. He stopped on a dime. That shows you how quick Atkins is. He knew he almost busted oh, on yeah. there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, if it hadn't been for Henderson, he might have been off to the races. 
Second and long, and the receiver fell down. Misread between the receiver and the defender, or I should say in the quarterback, rather, between the receiver and the, and the quarterback. It was a misread, and quarterback thought he was going long, and Sage Glasper, who returned that last punt, number 80, cut it up inside. Charlie, yeah. good job by the defensive back being very physical with the receiver. That time got a good jam on him, really disrupted him on his route. It is third, third and 11, with 12. Back to pass again. Harrison, he's sacked. Looked down by, again, Terrell Henderson is in there. Number 49, also in there to help out. Number six, he's been around today, Robert Brown. And that's really been the game plan. You see how they get up the field and box in Harris. So he has nowhere to go but to step up to where the help is. A good defense knows where its help is. And you see right here, he's trying to flush it up through the middle and forcing it back to all your help. Great defense that time by Kentucky State. And another punt. Second of the second half by Matt Hawthorne. And it's going to be out of bounds right at about the 28-yard line. Don't forget tomorrow, Mondays, the U will go inside the polls at 6 Eastern time. Join Mike Hall, Mike Gottfried, and Scouts Incorporated's Todd McShay. They're going to analyze the newly released polls, detailed breakdowns and analysis of the week that was and the week to come in college football. The U inside the polls every Monday, 6 p.m. Eastern, right here on ESPNU. First down and 10 at their own 28. As for Kentucky State, here's our quarterback in trouble. And guess who's got it? <laughs> Superman. After that way. <laughs> number 91. We're going to bronze that number. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see here, he's working against a freshman. He comes clean. Nice move and reaction. A good job of sniffing out the quarterback and working his way through traffic. Loss of six. It'll be second and 16. The key there, Charlie, is Petway's working against the freshman and James Jenkins, and he's really taking them to school today. You see he has two sacks and two fumble recoveries. Maybe a loss of seven on the play. They're not giving him any time to look and see anything, is he? They're, 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 they're just letting him run up the field or run all over the field. They're not giving him a chance to see or set up to see his receivers downfield. Charlie, and if I'm Coach Fari, I'd come back with running plays here because clearly he does not have time back in the pocket. You know, with Petway coming off the edge, he's running for his life right now. Well, you know, coming into the game defensively, Albany State was giving up about 281 yards. I mean, giving up an average of 140 yards rushing and 142 passing. But they've really stymied the Kentucky State offense today. They have, and Johnson's getting happy feet now because he knows he has people coming from every direction. Look for him to go back and try and run the ball. And like I said, they, here's a team, Kentucky State, as you look at the pass play again, trying to develop. Throws and has it complete. Finally gets a first down on a nice pass completion coming across with Jeremy Douglas, and he snatched it. Douglas comes from the other side of the field. It's a long developing play. Nice ball that time by Johnson. He continues to roll to his right and make it a more difficult throw, but a good job putting the ball in the numbers that time. They threaded the needle on that one because there's a couple defenders down there, and as you see, Jeremy Douglas, he's only 5'9", 150, so he could get lost in those trees of terror, <laughs> didn't he? <laughs> it is first and 10 across midfield into Albany State territory for Kentucky State. And here's a reverse. Jeremy Douglas trying to turn the corner, being chased by Alton Petway. And here's Jeremy Douglas. That was still on his feet. The 5'9", 150-pounder from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and Dillard High electrified his Kentucky State squad. Eric Crosby making the stop. Charlie, that was a great play call. I'll tell you why. They know that 91 Petway gets up the field in a hurry. They anticipated that, so they offset it with a reverse. That's an excellent play call, taking advantage of what Petway's been doing. He gets up the field in a hurry, so he doesn't have contain. And that is just an excellent play call by the offensive coordinator, taking what Petway does well and working it against him. 
longest play of the day for Kentucky State. From the shotgun, Sean Johnson throws it in the end zone and is tipped away. On by number 23, Dimitri McCray, one of the defensive captains. Honorable mention SIAC for the week against Miles. When we talked to the coaches yesterday, they said he is our top cover guy. And you see why here. Nice close on the ball, on the fade route, getting the hand up here to knock the ball down. That's man-to-man -man coverage showing you he has the ability to play on the island. John Jones was the intended receiver that time. It'll be second down and ten. They can get a first down without scoring a touchdown. One lone setback, and that's Roni Robinson in the backfield. Robinson, play action to him. Quarterback rolls left, throws it back across the field. Here's Robinson with the ball. Slips down at the nine. They gained about three yards and two yards after all of that. Two or three. A lot of uh, action for three yards. Yeah. A lot of work for three yards. But a good job of making something out of nothing by Johnson. We talked about his ability to improvise. That was a good example. And now there's a timeout on the field. I'm not sure if it was Kentucky State or Albany State who called it, but they're, one of the teams did call the timeout. Next week, uh, Albany State will play Lane College on the road. Don't forget the Hurricane Relief Fund. If you'd like to donate, there's still a lot of need for you to donate. Call 1-800-HELP-NOW or in Spanish, 1-800-257-7575 uh, or log on to www.redcross.org. The deepest penetration of the day for Kentucky State. They've been on their heels all afternoon long. 2.23 left here in the third quarter. This is the closest they've been to the goal line. They have the ball inside the 10. In fact, it's at the 8 with a third and 7 facing them. And Charlie, if they can punch the ball in here, it's going to build some momentum. And it's as tough of a day as it's been for them, they're still in this ball game. There's a lot of time left. They have to capitalize on this drive, though. They certainly do. This drive started at their own 28-yard line, and now they've driven all the way down to the 8-yard line of Albany State, the deepest penetration for the day. And let's see if they can capitalize on it. And even if they don't get it, they should be able to at least kick a field goal here and come away with something. And go with the full house backfield. Chambers, the last back back there. There's a man open, wide open in the backfield, coming out of the backfield, and it's Ronnie Robinson with the touchdown pass. Wide open. They head the full house backfield, and everybody coming in, and Robinson just trickled out into the flat, and he was wide open. Outstanding play call. As you said, it's a full house backfield. First time we're seeing it today. Robinson was able to slip out in the flat. They were thinking it was going to be a running play. Excellent play call by Kentucky State. And for Sean Johnson, his third touchdown pass of the year. The point after is good. And it's a three-point ball game with 2.18 to go, just like that. What Albany State had dominated, all of a sudden now, it's a three-point game. See Robinson slip out in the flat. The key there is the linebacker didn't drop out with him because he anticipated a running play. Nice job of getting it in the end zone by Robinson. 72-yard drive for Kentucky State. Their best drive of the day. They put it all together. And they score the touchdown. Their first score of the day. Well, we talked about the second half for Albany State in terms of giving up points and starting to hold itself a little true right now, isn't it? First points that they've given up. You know, they've only scored, that is, Albany State, three points in the second half all year. Well, Charlie, that's their Achilles heel. And talking to Coach White, they just don't know how to put teams away and knock them out when they have them on the ropes. Three points they've scored. They've given up 23 points in the second half this season. So, that tells the story right there. Clark to kick it off. Left footed kicker. Wilson will let it go over his head and it'll go out of the end zone for a touchback. And it'll be brought out to the 20. 
First down and 10. And remember, Kentucky State's defense has been playing pretty good as you look at that last scoring drive. 72 yards, seven plays, 210 off the clock. And they had that big run or pass uh, catch and, and, or I should say reverse, I should say, to Douglas that, uh, that helped them on that drive. And this enthusiasm is infectious. You can see their defense flying around. Now these guys are going to pin their ears back and try and keep Albany State pinned in. I think they're going to build some momentum here. Hosea Harris out of the shotgun. Atkins is back there with him. And here's Harris with the keeper. Quarterback option. And he takes it off to the left side. And he looks like he may have enough for first down. See where they mark it. Or he may be a little shy. Maybe a two yard or two shy of the first down marker. He has to get to the 30-yard line. They are going to mark it right at the 28. So it'll be second down and two after a gain of eight. Going with the no huddle again here, Charlie. Which they've done basically all game long. Here's Atkins, right side. He's not going to get loose. Jason Sneed, number 97, at the bottom of the pile for Kentucky State. This is a big stand for Kentucky State. Gain of one, third and one. Less than a yard to go for a first down. They stopped him earlier, Charlie. See if they can tighten the screws and hold them today. One of one from third down conversions for Albany. One of 11, I should say, for third down conversions for Albany State. Here's the quarterback on the keeper. Looks like he has enough. Hosea Harris gets across the 30, so it is enough for the first down. Coming into the game today on third down conversions, they were 29%, 7 of 24. They didn't help their average today. That's 2 of 12. As you look at Mike White. Atkins, or I should say it's Andrews back in the lineup, number eight. Power football. Again with Thunder there. Mr. Andrews. His ankle, they, they put a little tape on it there. He's a tough guy, though, so he'll just rub some dirt on it. You know, you got that can, that new stuff they call Don't Hurt No More. They just spray it on there, <laughs> <laughs> and that does the job. <laughs> well, it looked like it worked for him. He's back in the game and running the ball effectively. Gain of eight, second down and two once again. And he has the ball. Andrews off the right side, has the first down with plenty to spare up across the 40 to about the 44-yard line. So this is the type of offense that I'm sure Mike White, Donald Pittman, the offensive coordinator, likes is because, you know, you just grind it out. Just grind it out. Just grind it out. You do, Charlie, and you run the ball, but you also you run it to set up passing plays. And so I think they're going to come back to some passing routes here because they've run the ball effectively. Kentucky State has to honor that. And it creates one-on-one -on -one matchups with your receivers. And Kentucky State likes to play what they call a 4-2-5 defense. Green, Greg Green, who was an assistant at Tuskegee, and put together some schemes where he likes to blitz a lot. Here's Atkins into the secondary. And Atkins finally run out of bounds by Barkley Wright. But not before a big game. All the way down inside the 30 to about the 28-yard line of Kentucky State. Good play call. We talk about his vision. That time, Atkins did a nice cutback move. He's a slasher. I like what he did at the end of the play, though. He switched the ball. Watch him. He'll switch the ball to his outside arm. Well coached right there. Good technique. Keeps the ball away from the inside defender. Smart football for Antonio Atkins. Who only had uh, 20 yards rushing, or 53 yards rushing, I should say, at halftime. So they did a pretty good job. And here again, coming to the near side is Andrews. Cuts it back upfield, still rolling, carrying people with him down inside the 20 to the 15. First down and 10. And that is going to be the end of the third quarter here. Albany State on the move after being scored upon by Kentucky State. They're coming back with a vengeance. This drive started at their own 20. They're down now to the 15 of Kentucky State. We'll be back. Oh, it 
Sports, College Football, Kentucky State and Albany State from Albany Municipal Stadium in Albany, Georgia as we start the fourth quarter. Charlie Neal and Chris Martin here and we have a pretty good ball game here. First down and ten for Albany State. They're driving and here is Chris, I should say Antonio Atkins trying to go to the right side, trying to turn the corner and he gets it down to about the five yard line. A gain of five before I should say the 10-yard line. He was at the 15. Gets it to the 10, a gain of five. It'll be second down and five. Again, Charlie, when Atkins is in the game, they really want to get him on the perimeter. And look at the numbers so far. Of the yards, Kentucky State 113, and most of those came on that last drive. 72 of those came on that last drive. 272 for Albany State. And here again is Anderson. Flag is down. And Anderson is in the end zone. But we have a flag holding against Albany State. Another penalty. Well, the cannon went off prematurely. <laughs> Anticipation. <laughs> Anticipation is worse than <laughs> fear itself. <laughs> so the, they're not paying attention. I believe it was the tight end that got called for the hole. There it is. That was an easy call there too, yep. Charlie. Romeo Montez. They're reloading, <laughs> just in case. <laughs> so it is second down. And Isaiah Harris trying to step out of trouble, and he cannot. He cannot get away from a relentless defense led by Abraham Jackson, who's been the Kentucky State version of Alton Petway. Charlie, that's a coverage sack. Harris wanted to go to the corner route up top, but it was well covered and blanketed. See here? This is cover sack. He has nowhere to go with the football. He has time. When you have that much time, somebody's doing a good job on the defensive side of the ball, making sure your receivers aren't loose. Harris throws it. Incomplete. There was a couple Kentucky State defenders had a better chance at that ball than the receiver. The intended receiver down there. You see you get roll out here. Harris is looking downfield. It's well covered though again. The defensive back makes a nice play on it. Almost gets a pick there. So that brings up a fourth down. And we're going to get the shoe man. <laughs> Matt Harper on there looking for him. Where are you, Matt? <laughs> Checking his shoes. Dimitri McRae is the holder. This will come oh. from the 35. It'll be a 45 yard. They have to call a timeout because they were going to get a penalty and they were going to put him out of field goal range. That was going to be a 50 yard field goal if he had not. There he is. He's got his shoe. He's still trying to put it together, though. I think it's his chin strap now this time. <laughs> First it was his shoes. Now he's his chin strap. That's very, very interesting. This is a fourth and 22 situation. It'll be a 35-yard field goal, but look at Albany State's running game. Just picked up the last this drive. And he got a great cutback by Atkins. Here you got a power play by Andrews, who's the Thunder. He's a power back. And you got to hang on and go for a ride. And then again, Atkins coming out on the perimeter. He can mix it up. And he has the speed to turn the corner. And does a good job of doing that. So this will be a 45-yard field goal attempt as you look at the rushing yards for Albany State. Kentucky State just 45. And much of that came on an end-around play. This will actually be a 44-yard field goal attempt. High snap, kick is up. And it's not going to get there. So, the 44 field goal attempt is no good by Matt Hawthorne. His longest attempt so far this year. He kicked one earlier, but this one is not good. 
final quarter. It's 10 to 7. Albany State, the last time Kentucky State had the ball, they went 72 yards, and here's one reason why. That young man, Jeremy Douglas. And then he gets a big reverse play, which is a well-designed play by Kentucky State. And then lastly, Robinson sneaks out and punches it in. It's Curtin's touchdown for Kentucky State. And there you see Jeremy Douglas, the young man from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, who checks in at about 150 pounds, and that's soaking wet at five foot nine. Sean Johnson, his team, 27 yard line. And they keep the ball on the ground, go straight ahead. This they're trying to put together, hopefully, a 73 yard drive. They had the 72 yard of the last time and give it up to get uh, pick up their first points of the ball game. Charlie, I like the play call though. Run up, run right at Petway, who, who's the monster on defense. You know, you got to make him think about different plays. You can't get him thinking just pass. And, he'll tear you up. Right. Nice job. Yeah, because uh, he, he's going to come with a vengeance, isn't he? Mm -hmm. From the shotgun, Sean Johnson. Play action. Here comes Petway. Just gets it off, and it's behind the intended receiver, Jeremy Douglas. But Petway was right there. I mean, he was all over Johnson as soon as he let that ball go. Doesn't take long. He's really a hybrid because he's a linebacker, but he can play D-line also. You know, he's he's got a little bit of the Lawrence Taylor in him. He can turn the corner, get around the edge quickly. He's a heck of a football player, but he's got he's got a he's got a motor, and it just won't quit. Third it, down and nine. NFL teams love players who have who have motors, and, and Petway certainly has that. Again from the shotgun, Sean Johnson. And here he gets outside. There's a flag down. We may have a holding and out of bounds in front of the Albany State bench goes Sean Johnson. Referee threw the flag, so we're going to have holding. I believe I saw that before he even got outside. They were trying to hold him Petway. They said, well, let me protect my quarterback in any way I can. That's one way to do it. <laughs> Penalty is refused. Let's watch. See, there you go. Boom. He's grabbing by the jersey. Here's another one. <laughs> Everybody's uh, holding in that one. So the penalty is declined. They're going to bring up a fourth down punting situation. it back gets a block on the sideline there goes green he's inside the 30 to about the 29 yard line on the return by brandon green jr from houston texas charlie they didn't draw it up this way this is green using his athletic ability to elude defenders and find a crease excellent play excellent vision and then he has the speed to burst it. About 32 yards on the return. First down and 10. Albany State, good field position. Antonio Atkins slips through a couple of defenders and picks up good yardage. About five, it'll be second down and five before Robert Brown made the stop. Atkins, can, he gets stronger and stronger as the day goes on. But I think right now what Coach White's trying to do is eat up the clock by grinding it out. 12-15, the time to remaining here in the fourth quarter. Atkins gets a hold. That was a big hole. You and I both could have ran through that at the same time. <laughs> and that, again, is a good point to credit the offensive line. And those guys are big guys, 330, 320. That's what aided getting Atkins these numbers, 105 yards on the day. 
largely attributed to his offensive lineman up front. Yeah, and he only had 54 yards in the first two weeks, so he had a big day today. In the first two games, a total of 54 yards. And there's Andrews bouncing off people. Look at him, still going, and he's still going. And he's down inside the five. At about the one-yard line goes Andrews, and he's pumped, isn't he? <laughs> Andrews is a load, but this is this is poor tackling. Andrews, he looks like a pinball here, running through. Here, bounces off the player there, runs through contact. And he's not just running up by some uh, people that can't play. As we get a touchdown for Albany State, he's running over some quality people like Marcus Wright, people like that. He's feeling it. He's a big guy. You really got to wrap him up. And this is his second touchdown of the day. This one from one yard out, and they misfired this time. <laughs> he's running. <laughs> And I say that because they fired pre one prematurely before. <laughs> I don't think he's having a good day with his timing. <laughs> Andrews with the one-yard run. And it's 16-7. to seven. On for the point after. Matt Hawthorne. Go, go, go. Dimitri McRae is holding. Low snap. The kick is up. And it's good. 17-7 to seven is our score here. 11-32 remaining. And we're in the fourth quarter. Big drive, 30 yards, and it's a 10-point game. 32 remaining, 17-7, Albany State in the lead, and the SIC led Division II in football attendance last season. For the second straight year, the conference averaged just under 7,000 fans per game, and six of the SIAC schools also made the top 20 list, including Albany State, which was second in the nation in attendance. They averaged almost 12,000 fans per contest. Tuskegee ranked third. Morehouse had an increase of fans last year, and they grabbed the final spot in the top 20. So congratulations. And, of course, this stadium that we're in today, the Albany Municipal Coliseum, second year of existence here on the campus. Great stadium, seats 10,000, but uh, they pile them in here. They really do. Charlie Neal, Chris Martin here. 11.32 is the time remaining, and uh, Albany State just increased their lead as Andrew scored his second touchdown of the day. This one will be brought out from the end zone by Wright. Marcus Wright into the middle of the field, and Marcus Wright, a 44-yard return of that kickoff. He brought it from the end zone. They'll mark it at the 45. Great job of Wright making a play at a critical time he finds a little hole here but he has the speed to get up there nice job good cutback excellent job of finding some running room and accelerating to pick up yardage and he came into the game averaging 23 yards per kickoff return he was third in the conference in fact he had an 88 yard kickoff return against clark atlanta a couple weeks ago as you look at that last scoring drive four plays and they use a minute 13 off the clock. Here's play action from Juan Johnson. And the court, the pass is caught. The diving catch had to be made by Kentucky State's Darrell Miller, number 84. I think the big thing now, Charlie, is not to panic. Just stick within your game plan. Try to methodically work the ball down the field. Well, it was important for them to score that one touchdown that they had. What was more important was not allow that big punt return by Green and then allow the touchdown by Albany State. They were still in the ball game, and they're still not out of it. But time is not a, a fan right now. His Chambers turns the corner on the far side and picks up close to getting the first. Let's see where they mark it. No, he didn't get there. It's going to be a couple yards shy of a first down. Chambers has been invisible today. I, I thought that he would have been more productive on the ground. But again, I think a lot of that's attributed to the Defense. interior defensive line, I'm sure. Six in the nation, or I should say in SIC in rushing. Said his goal coming into the year was to rush for 1,200 yards and have 300 yards in receiving because he's a pretty good receiver coming out of the backfield. They will use their running backs to catch passes. Quarterback in trouble. Still in trouble. Still in trouble. It's 
like a Pac-Man game right like now. <laughs> and he lets it fly. And the man dropped it. He had a receiver who had it in the bread basket and let it go. Can you believe it? Antonio Fraley is defending number 52, and it was the man we were just talking about, Cassius Chambers, coming out of the backfield, who had it and couldn't hold on. And the bell rings, you got to answer. That time, Johnson trying to make the Sports Center highlight reel tonight. <laughs> That's a good job of eluding tacklers and putting a nice ball out there for his receiver, who was being covered by a linebacker. <laughs> Give credit to the linebacker for not giving up on the play. And it brings up fourth down punting situation. Boy, you're talking about a, a lot of uh, high jinx on that one. Now we got another penalty. <laughs> that was like sandlock football. All we need is a mailbox out there. No penalty. <laughs> no flag. Just needed some air. Here comes another official going to come in and blow his whistle. <laughs> After that every, long run by Johnson, I think every, I think every, I think that's what it is. <laughs> I've refereed basketball, and I've gone a whole three or four minutes of the game, and they're back and forth, up and down the floor, and nobody has fouled anybody or no reason to blow the whistle. I just say, hey, I need one. <laughs> I just blow the whistle and stop. Look, let's sit down and talk about something. We got, we've got to have something here. <laughs> Illegal substitution against Albany State. No, he pointed against Albany State. Now, now they, when the ref up here is walking the wrong way. Is that a first down? That should give him a first down. It is. It gives Kentucky State a first down and new life on the illegal substitution against Albany State. Somebody went in when they shouldn't have. So what a way to give up a first down with 10, 12 to go. Mike White can't be pleased with the chain of event when you look at all the penalties in this game. I like the Kentucky State flying back out on the field, though. They know this is a big drive. Here's Chambers. Chambers gets about three yards, just shy of the 40-yard line. So they keep this drive alive on the penalty. Remember, it started at their own 45. Charlie, it makes you wonder. They've had success, Kentucky State, running the ball to the outside. I wonder why you'd want to come back and run right into the teeth of the defense. 13 penalties against Albany State, 104 yards. Second down and we'll call it eight. From the shotgun, play action, throwing it up top, too big for the intended receiver. And that is Brandon Adams, the quarterback, the backup quarterback coming out from the wide receiver spot. And I asked Coach yesterday, I said, well, you've got Brandon playing a lot of receiver. Should Sean Johnson have to go out for whatever reason, would Brandon Adams be the quarterback? And he said, no question. Well, he's an athlete, no doubt. That play was good coverage by McCray, pinning him to the sideline, blanking him. Quarterback wanted to keep it that time, but he was not going to get away from big number 99, Franklin Turner, the senior from Mobile, Alabama, one of the returning starters on the defensive side of the ball for Albany State. Charlie Johnson is just looking to bail out. He's really not getting comfortable. He can't set his feet. He's been hurried all day long, and so he's looking to bail out instead of stay in the pocket and go through his reads. Hurry up! Now let's see if they got the right substitutions in this time. They have Green on the near side to return this punt. And we got a flag again. This one is delay a game <laughs> against Kentucky State. Step, delay a game, 
You know, that's one reason, Chris, I never wanted to coach. Because <laughs> I wouldn't have any hair, you know, <laughs> who plays like that. You know, it's, it's how many delay of game penalties have we seen today? And that's almost none, no excuse. And there's the penalties, 20 between the two teams, but look at Albany State. They almost doubled Kentucky State in 104 yards in penalties. At least Kentucky State seven haven't been for a lot of yards. Here's a play, here's a fake, and here's the punter still on his feet, trying to get to the first down marker, and I think he made it. That was the punter. Stephen Harris. I believe he got it. A little, little uh, fake there, and he may not have gotten it. Let's see. Let's see. They're going to measure this one. I'm looking at the, the, the toe of the official and where he's pointing and where they place that ball. He may not have made it. He may have made it. Let's see. It's going to be close. It's all about the spot here, Charlie. It sure is. They're taking a good long look at this one. I mean, it may be just the nose of the football. I mean, this little stripe around the tip. <laughs> that was a, a, a well-designed play. It almost broke down on him because uh, the determination of the of the punter, Harris, he just. Broke a couple tackles getting there. They got it. First down. Couldn't have come in a more critical time. Let's look at it. They actually snapped no, it to the it up Andrew. back. It was Adams, not the, not the punter. It was Adams, the backup uh, quarterback. A little chicanery by Coach Farrier. Good job of Adams of using his will to break tackles and get to the sticks. He certainly did, especially the one that would have put him way short of the first down marker. So they keep the drive alive. Two fourth down situations they were faced. One was an illegal substitution penalty against Albany State, and then they go for it on fourth and long with a punting situation, and they do the fake punt. Here's Sean Johnson, steps away from the rush, throws it out there, intercepted, almost in and out of the hands of number 41, Rod Whipple. Roderick Whipple, the free safety is seeing you out of Toomsboro, Georgia. The key here, Charlie, good job of eyeing the quarterback and reacting to the throw. I mean, he covered a lot of territory. That's a safety with great range. He's able to come over the top and nice job of attacking the football, getting it at its highest point. Everything that you're coached to do. Jawan Jones was the intended receiver. One second down. There goes the quarterback, Johnson. And Johnson is close to another first down if he doesn't have it, as Franklin Turner came up to make the stop defensively. He's going to be very close to another first down. That's just good feet on behalf of the quarterback, Sean Johnson, the senior from Trinity High in Louisville. Kentucky. He feels the pressure, a nice little slide step of seeing a running lane. We haven't seen much of this with any success with Johnson today, but a nice job of finding a running lane and trying to get to the sticks. They call it a first down. It is a first down inside the 25 to the 23 yard line. Simpson for another first down at the 10-yard line. And it's Juwan Jones fighting for yards. Juwan, Juwan Jones, Jones the first game that he's played, he was just became eligible before they left to come down here on this trip. So Juwan Jones picks up the yardage. You'll see Jones up top on a slant route here. Again, he has good size. He's 6'3". Charlie, when you get big, tall receivers, you love to run them on slant routes because they can body the defender. Especially when they're smaller defenders on that secondary. Exactly. And one of them was Marcus Jefferson. So you had a 6'3 going against a 5'10". And now... We have an injury, I believe. Maybe. It's the official's time. Maybe uh, someone is shaking up on the defensive side of the ball. Don't forget Thursday. Thursday night. 
Greensboro, North Carolina, a MIAC matchup. ESPNU goes up there to watch Hampton at North Carolina A&T. The Aggies do battle, and it should be a pretty good ball game. Of course, Hampton University has Justin Durant, who is the preseason defensive player of the year in the Mid-East Athletic Conference. You get a chance to see that young man along with Alonzo Coleman, the offensive preseason player of the year for Hampton University. Comes your way 7.30 p.m. Thursday night from Greensboro. And that's the player we were talking about was shaking up on the play. I believe it was Marcus Jefferson, number 14. Yeah, he was he's a little guy. Got a little leg injury there. There he is being helped off. He's a, one of the smallest in the recent history of uh, Albany State on the defensive side of the ball. And his coaches say he plays a lot bigger. He's a kid with a lot of heart who's not afraid to stick his nose in there and make plays. And Gavin Willingham, number 19, comes in to take his place. Now, Gavin is 6'3", so they gain a lot of height with Gavin. Gavin is a junior. Back to pass. Johnson throws it complete. Boy, Danny Hawkins looked like he should have had that one. Yeah, it went right through his hands. He's got to make that catch. Good job of Johnson putting the ball where it needs to be. You'll see Johnson slide here to his left. He really doesn't set his feet well. You'd like for him to put the ball on the numbers because he had his big tight end wide open. They still are calling it second and 10, not second and goal. And the ball is right outside the 10 yard line. Johnson, quick pass, and it's behind Jeremy Douglas, number 12. So to bring up third and 10. That was that quick pass. Remember they completed one earlier to Douglas like that coming across. Quick slant. Threaded the needle between a couple of defenders. Now let's see if they can keep it alive here. 7-13, the time remaining in the fourth quarter. It is third and ten facing Kentucky State. They've trailed in this ball game throughout. They trailed by a score of 7-0, 10-0, 10-7, and now 17-7. but picked off in the end zone by Dimitri McCray. McCray out of Thomasville, Georgia. He was tied coming into the game with interceptions. He had two for the season. This is his third. Excellent job of being physical at the line, disrupting the route. That is exactly how you're taught to play that fade route. He got good hands off of the release. Blanket coverage by Dimitri McCray. Fourth turnover today for Kentucky State and not what you need but for Dimitri McRae his third INT of the season he was tied for the lead with the young man named Jackson from Kentucky State so your interception leaders are both in this game another flag Fourth turnover today by Kentucky State. Two of their turnovers have led directly to 10 points for Albany State. One a touchdown in the second quarter and then a field goal off of a fumble in the second quarter. Off the left side. Boy, he's strong, isn't he? Look at Andrews. Big run here. Power back again. When he gets his shoulders square, he's tough to bring down. And he's just excited. Leads to an easy touchdown by Jose Harris. Second down. Here's Atkins bouncing it to the outside. But they string it out. Marcus Wright. 
Brings it out. Trying to get to that first down marker, which is right at the 30 yard line. He's going to be shy by about two yards. So that's a nice play by Marcus Wright of making Atkins go lateral and not able to turn the corner. Or turn his shoulders square, right? Exactly. Here is the story on Andrews, 132 yards, Atkins 106. So you have two running backs that have 238 yards in this game. Between them, they entered the game with 173 between them. Here's Andrews getting the first down across the 30. And that's all he needed to keep the to keep the, the drive alive. And they just rotate the two of them between Andrews and Atkins. I'll tell you, it reminds me of Coleman and Daniel from Hampton <laughs> University, the two 1,000-yard rushers from a year ago. Well, it's good balance. I mean, you got a guy that can run between the tackles and Andrews. Atkins can bounce it on the perimeter. Keep the defense honest. And that's what Coach Mike White was expecting from them at the beginning of the season. And here's Atkins. They're keeping the drive alive. They're keeping the clock running. And they're using safe plays. Andrews coming out. Atkins coming back in. Such a luxury for Coach White, too, when he has these type of running backs. See the yardage that they put up. It is a luxury to have backs that are quality like Atkins and Andrews. We also have a new quarterback in there in Terrence Ransom. He's a freshman from Albany, Georgia, right here. He had one snap against all, uh, Valdosta a week ago, and he just handed the ball off. Coach Pittman said he doesn't hesitate to put him in here. The coach, the uh, other quarterback, Jose Harris, doesn't have to make mistakes. He doesn't have to get hurt. I want him to play because I want him to feel what it's like to be in real game situations. Well, and it's a testament to Harris because he's an unselfish player, Charlie, and that's a sign of a leader. He said, look, I'm going to help Terrence Ransom when he, if he goes into the game. I'm going to coach him up. He's my teammate. And, you know, you love to see unselfish players like Jose Harris. Terrence Ransom being a yoke local kid from Monroe High here in Albany, Georgia. Coach was saying a lot of times that people are yelling from the stands like nobody did in high school. Hey, you got to put him in there. You got to put him in there. But we are going to put him in there. And he's a big, tall kid at 6'3", 190 pounds, wearing number one, Terrence Ransom. And he's throwing his first collegiate pass, and it's incomplete. His first pass as a college player. He ended up on his back. Welcome to college. Yeah. And his fourth down. But he is the quarterback he, of the future. And he has a great arm. And like we were talking earlier, Coach Pittman said, you know, Hosea Harris was recruited four years ago to start, but he wasn't ready. And uh, he sat on the bench, and he did a good job. He even mentored Yule Joyner, who's now a student assistant coach on the team. Block. Should have been. Now the, they got to call a pass. Incomplete. They're going to call an incomplete pass, and it's going to be over on downs because Matt, the uh, punter, Matt Hawthorne, was about to get that one blocked. So he, he, he didn't have his juice. Right. <laughs> Let's watch it again. He knew the kitchen was hot. He was trying to get out of there. We'll be back. Four ten remaining here. We're in Albany, Georgia for this Kentucky State Albany State contest. And it's a 17 to 7 ball game. I'm Charlie Neal along with Chris Martin. Kentucky State with the ball first down and 10. Here's the quarterback throwing wide open is Roney Robinson, but they can't get it to him. Roney Robinson coming out of the backfield and Sean Johnson was pressured by the defense. And of course, Alton Petway was the man who's putting the pressure, who's been putting pressure all day. Yeah, he's had a busy day. Johnson under duress again. Literally just has to throw that one up. Petway using his speed today, working against the freshman lineman. Been very successful. Well, when we started the, uh, the uh, telecast, we talked about the quarterbacks and how they needed to perform in this particular ball game. And here comes... Petway again from the far side or near side and 
Sean Johnson just decides to take off with it and go around the right side. Let me get away from all that pressure. I, I knew he's coming, so I don't even want to look about, look around to see where he was. Sean Johnson is going to see 91 in his sleep tonight. He's been breathing down his neck Sorry, all day. Coach Fario is going to see 91 in his sleep tonight. <laughs> you know? Penway is just a junior. That means he's going to be wreaking havoc another season. And he wasn't even a starter a year ago. It's hard to believe that, isn't it? No. The only starter back on the defensive line is Franklin Turner, number 99. The only other starter was Dimitri McRae. They only had four back from a year ago. Both two on the offense, two on the defense. Incomplete. We have a flag down. Let's see if this interference or holding on the defense. Like it may be holding on the defensive back on the crossing route. Our officials, Greg Edwards, has been very busy. There's Mike White. It is defensive holding. That's going to be a first down for Kentucky State. That's going to move the chains forward toward the goal line. 347 the time remaining. And I think they said number seven. That'd have been Eric Crosby if that's the case. You know, Coach Mike White said he felt his defense was ahead of the curve. You know, he always wanted to where a team is in terms of the offense, defense. Defense normally plays uh, gets a, a little bit ahead of the, the offense early on and he said he felt his defense was a little bit ahead of the curve this year and they played pretty well so far today here's the pressure again this time Eric Crosby he held all right along with Petway but he held the man down to the ground and that was the quarterback Sean Johnson there's Petway Petway creating his own highlight reel today he comes off the edge good job getting to the quarterback He's had a party at the quarterback all day long today. A feast, and then we have an injured Kentucky State player down, and that's the receiver, Jawan Jones. He's down at about the two-yard line, some kind of a leg cramp. The trainer's over attending to him, but there's Crosby, number seven. I believe he was called for a hold on the previous play, two-time SIEC Newcomer of the Week. So far this year, in two games this year, he was the Newcomer of the Week, and he's a done a pretty good job he had a 97 yard interception for a touchdown that he returned against miles college he had nine tackles two solo and a field goal uh fumble recovery i should say against valdosta so uh he's been uh, doing a pretty good uh, job on the on the defensive side of the ball first year here on this campus well i think collectively on defense they have a bunch of game breakers guys that can just change a game instantly petway crosby yeah, they have a feast. You see quarterback sacks yeah. five today. Just want to, while we've got a moment, say that this season by Albany State is being dedicated to a young man that I know. I say young man, it was Fred Doc Suttles, who for 39 years was the voice, the radio voice of Albany State sports. And he passed away in June. Uh, you know, at the he broadcast uh, a lot of games. At the age of 75, he passed away uh, back in June. And... Uh, 66 times that uh, I've seen him. I, I, I can I probably had, or more over the years, but he's a great guy. Last season was his last year broadcasting Albany State games. 39 years. And that pass intended for Adams goes incomplete. Brings up a third and 20. Marcus Jefferson over there defending. Charlie, that time you got a post corner route, which is a double move. It's difficult to run when you have a defense that's applying that much pressure because it takes a long time to develop. Disconnect, trying to find his receiver. I think if I'm Coach White, I'm upset that my team doesn't know how to put away another team. I mean, because that's what championship teams do. When you have a team up against the ropes, you got to be able to take them out. 3.22, the time remaining. 17 to 7. Third and 20. Here comes Petway. He steps up in there this time. 
Johnson lets it go. Why? He took a hit when he... And it was incomplete. Douglas, but well, what a hit on the quarterback. Sean Johnson, I don't know how he got up from that one after he got hit. It was Cummings who hit him. Watch this. Well, he sees nothing to the right, but Petway, of course, is on him. He rolls out to the left and actually throws a pretty good ball here down the field. Gives his receiver a chance to make a play, although it's a difficult catch. We on it, we on it. One he should have pulled in. Well, you got to go for it. It's fourth down and 10. 3-11 to go, trailing by 10. No choice here but to go for it. I'd look up top to Adams. Big receiver. Maybe a jump ball situation here, Charlie. Well, you need this 10 yards for first down, so you don't have to put it in the end zone. Here comes Pentway. Pentway falls down, so that gives him a break. And here's a pass complete on the far sideline, but way shy of a first down. In fact, they lost yardage on that one. I believe it was Ronnie Robinson on the receiving end. We have another flag. The tackle for Kentucky State is barely getting a hand on Petway. I mean, that's the Olay block or you just let the guy run by. Face mask. I'll tell you, they keep their drives alive somehow through penalties or magic, <laughs> which is it? <laughs> well, and I think that's where Coach White, as I alluded to earlier, is really frustrated with his team. I mean, you got an opportunity to take Kentucky State out of the game, but then you let them back in with the face mask here. And it, well, it's still fourth down. So they get another opportunity. So it's fourth and about 15, 16. We'll call it fourth and 16. Again from the shotgun. Here comes Petway, double team. And they're trying to get it to Ronnie Robinson out the flat. They do. Ronnie Robinson still on his feet inside. But he's still going to be 11 yards shy of getting to the end zone, or the first down, I should say. So they turn the ball over on down. They get to the 20. They needed to get all the way down to about the 8. Charlie, when you have 15, 20 yards to get to, they Swing just don't. Swing pass doesn't do it. Right, does. and they just don't have time to let those longer routes develop. And so it really minimizes your play call. And you're just checking down, hitting the dump offs. And all now Albany State has to do is run the clock out. Both teams with two timeouts remaining. But with the running backs the way they've been running today, although the Kentucky State defense is rise, trying to rise to the occasion right now, there's the man who's been the man. And let's watch some of the antics he's put up today. Well, you see, he comes up here, gets his hands on Johnson. Again, a quick rip move. Gets to the quarterback, applies pressure. And that's a swim move. He has a complete arsenal. Swim move, rip move, speed move. And he has a nose to the ball. Evidenced by that fumble recovery. Good job fighting off the block and getting to the quarterback here. Another rip move. There he is, and the numbers on him, nine tackles, a couple sacks, and Johnny Cole, the new coach at Lane, is going to figure out how do I stop this guy. That's who they play next week. That is Albany State, and there it is. A forced fumble, a block punt, two sacks, fumble recovery. I mean, it's uh, it's been a day. Well, what impresses me most about Petway is he has a complete arsenal. He has three solid moves, a speed rush, a quick swim, and a rip move. And a lot of times, players don't learn those moves until they get to the NFL. This is an incredible football player that we're looking at right here. Well, he's going to be uh, the talk of the conference. Every offensive coordinator's got to figure out, yeah. <laughs> what do we do to keep him out of our backfield? And how many players are you going to assign to block him? Right, especially when we go to pass. <laughs> well, you know, that's the thing is you, you players that have the fun out there, those are the guys that usually are your best players. You see Petway smiling. You know, the game is moving very slow for him right now. And it's all, he's seeing everything. He's using all of his ability. He's really the mainstay and the anchor for Albany State's defense. Third down. 
Kentucky State spent one of its two remaining timeouts, and they have one left. Clock is stopped with a minute 41 to go. Third down facing the Albany State Golden Rams, trying to increase their record to two and one. Thoroughbreds of Kentucky State will go to one and two, 0 oh and two in the conference. And close to a first down on this run out to the 30-yard line is Andrews, who may have put the icing on the cake if that's a first down. That was a third down play. And let's see if he picked up the first down. That, that uh, will be it. One timeout remaining for Kentucky State. Albany State had to get their feet under them. They lost to Valdosta a week ago, a team that they split during the regular season or split with last year. They beat Valdosta in the second game of the season, then lost to them in the, one, in the Division II playoffs. And that was... Uh, they went 11-0 during the regular season, or 11, they had won 11 games before they lost to Valdosta. Charlie, and I think the message that Coach White will tell his team is, yes, this was a win, but it was an ugly win. Yeah, it was. And, and they were very fortunate to overcome all the hurdles and the penalties that they've had today. Especially with the penalties. And I think conversely with Coach Farrier, he's got to get his arms around his young team and tell them that there's going to be better and brighter days for him. That's Keith Mouton from Houston, Jr. Getting a little action here. So that should have been the last play. And that's going to be it. So, Chris, your thoughts? Well, you see Mike White. Again, Coach White is happy that they got a win, but I think he's going to go back to the lab and say, look, we got to fix all these penalties, and we just have to be more disciplined if we're going to be a championship team. Coach Farr is going to talk to his kids, get them ready to play next week, and say, look, we lost this game, but we had some opportunities, but we'll get them fixed, and we'll get you coached up. All right, Andrews with a pair of touchdowns. Hawthorne, a 20-yard field goal. That accounted for the scoring for Albany State. Uh, Johnson with an eight-yard pass to Roni Robinson, accounted for the only scoring for Kentucky State. And the uh, final score here from Albany, Georgia, is Albany State 17-7 over Kentucky State. For Chris Martin, Charlie Neal saying so long from Albany, Georgia.